It's always fucking something. Thanks for the raid nonsense. I just, you know, just, just to, to fucking, just, I just want, like, can the universe give me, like, a month? Just a month. That's all I'm asking. Like, a month. Right? Like, of just, just, just shit actually just smoothly. Just smooth. For a fucking month? I know that's a lot to ask. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right, Bobby? Fucking hey. Let's just say I gotta find a supply line. And I know all of you are thinking, well, Kai's good at finding supply lines, so but it's 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 a fucking thing. It's a fucking thing, and I can't get into it because fucking TOS and shit. But I gotta find a fucking supply line. And just 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 yeah. Apparently this shit happened three weeks ago and I didn't even notice. Oh. Hey Kez. What's up? I'm just bitching. I'm just fucking bitching. That's 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 literally where I am right now. I'm just fucking bitching. Um apparently somebody's already started fucking I can't talk about it on air, Kez. <laughs> Straight up TOS. Um so, like, apparently somebody's already started fucking commenting on the, um, I started uploading the ANCAP stuff. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm doing a video series reading the Anarchist FAQ, um, document on why ANCAPs are not anarchists. And quite literally, somebody just a few moments ago started commenting. If the libertarian cannot use a theory of justice as an armor against state oppression, then he has no solid base from which to roll back and defeat it. Rothbard, Vice's intro, right? And whoever it is, whoever's account it is, has, like, nothing attached to the account. Like, legitimately. Like, they're, they're, they're already starting. It's like, come at me, bro, sort of shit, right? They're already starting. I got, I got up to, I did 1.0, I did the intro, 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, and 1. Uh, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, right? These, these are the sections that I've managed to get up um, so far. And, like, yeah, it, it like, I, I'm gonna keep, but there's, like, 11 sections. It's gonna be fucking years. <laughs> It uh, legitimately 1.4 took 54 minutes to read, something like that. It's gonna take me hours and hours to read that document. Um, but it needs doing. Someone needs to fucking sit these people down and explain to them. And apparently, people don't like to read, so it's on me, I guess, to record it. Um. Oh, I just, you know, it's just, it's, it's already a long day and my day is like three hours old, <laughs> right? I got up. It wasn't too terrible. Hey, Cassidy, I got up. Um, oh shit. I forgot to, I forgot to, oh shite. <sighs> Oh, can you give me a second here?
Okay, I'm back. Um, <sighs> I have no idea. Uh, nonsense. I have no idea what's on B Bad Movie Night. Um, will I be more enlightened as an anarchist if I bother to read or watch the VODs? Whether it depends how you take in information. Do you read effectively? Right? Like, do you like do you like to sit down with a document and parse through it and like highlight and make notes in the margin and shit? Or are you the type that likes to put audio on in the background and listen to somebody talk? If you're the type that likes to listen to somebody uh, speak and you take in information audibly and you actually can receive it that way, then listen to the to the videos, I guess. You don't need to watch them. Like, there's no need to watch them. Just, just put them on in the background and listen to them. But if you like to read, then read the fucking document. The document's miles long and it's going to take me many hours to get through it. So you can you can finish the document sooner than I can read the document to you. Um, but that's up to you. Like you gotta know your own learning style. You're a reader, you're a listener, you're a watcher, which what's your fucking deal? Um, I'm a dual kind of person. I like to uh, like I will listen to something, but I need the document in front of me so I can also do the highlighting notation. If I have a default setting, it's the document needs to be in front of me. I'm a reader, first and foremost. Telling me things isn't the, the best way for me to learn it. The best way for me to learn it is to sit down with the, the piece and be able to, like I said, parse it out, highlight it, notate in the margins, circle things, underline things, that sort of stuff. That's who I am. Um, but, you know, know thyself. Hey, Yeti. Um, ah, thank you, Charlotte. Um... Uh, Herodimus Pixo is doing something. Uh, whatever we're watching, I have a bottle of Bacardi for it. All right, Buddhist. Jesus. Um, um, oh, it, but is it useful beyond the critique of capitalism, which is what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Like, this is a lot of topics that we don't normally cover. Um, like, there's a lot of, like, um, dissecting a priori reasoning within the... Um, sort of anti-statist and cap right libertarian camp and the uh, underlying flaws in their uh, logical processes that we generally just don't cover on this channel because again it takes it takes 54 fucking minutes just to talk about one aspect of it right imagine like an hour just just one question just one question took f took an hour Right of like this, you have to know this, and you have to understand this citation, and you have to know this person's citation, and you have to understand where this is coming from, and you have to understand the historical context. Right, like I come at it from a very um, sort of uh, look. I already know half this shit. Um, I come at it from an experiential position and a common sense position of already grasping these topics. And so there's no need for me to elucidate it. The the what I what I do is con, uh, is condense it down to the common sense version for you guys, right? Ancaps aren't anarchists because just be, uh, just because somebody uh, be, uh, does not of uh, think the state is justified does not make them an anarchist. This is their claim that capitalism somehow clears the hurdle. Of the justification, the philosophical justifications necessary to met out the title and uh, a title and um, uh, ideological categorization of anarchism. But anarchists sit back and say, "No, capitalism doesn't clear that for many reasons." Right. And so this is sort of going through so many of those reasons and the logic behind it and the processing behind their logic behind it. And the fact that Rothbard does things like argue you cannot use experiential data. Your experience of reality is not allowed in their theorems. 
right? Theory is the dictum by which they they live and rule. And whether these people know it or not, it's like conservatives, how we talk about um, the Burkean roots of conservatism. Whether they know it or not, Edmund Burke lies as a very strong pillar, a root system of modern conservatism. Whether a modern MAGA cap-wearing, red-blooded, flag-waving, fucking Trump-supporting, deep south, fuck those fuck, uh, those queers, women, you know, women need their place in the in the uh, in, need to have a place in the kitchen type person understands Burkean philosophy Burke still underpins their philosophy whether they know it or not this is where this thought process comes from and so whether they know it or not Rothbard Mises Hoppe right like the, this underpins it and Rothbard literally argues that your experiential data your experience the facts that you gather from life the scientific method itself cannot be used in uh, to uh, dis uh, to disqualify or invalidate their theory Theory can only be compared. Okay, so this is the sort of stuff that we we are literally having to step through, step by step by step in this document. And mad props to the people who wrote it. It's a collective work. Mad props to the people who wrote it because I, if I had to write this document, I'd fucking put a bullet in my skull probably, right? Like to under to have interacted with this many ANCAPs to understand their nuanced arguments to this degree would drive me insane, right? Like, it, it's it's batshit insane that they have this degree of detail, but they go into this degree of detail. It's quite literally an academic course on debunking ANCAPs. And I, I've never felt the need to do that myself, right? Because I understand the philosophical hurdles that uh, capitalism can't clear. Right? It is coercive. It is oppressive. Wage slavery is an unjust dynamic. Right? Landlords are an unjust dynamic. We get this. Right? Like, most of us understand this shit. Like, I don't have to explain to you that your boss is a dictator and what they say goes is an authoritarian relationship and that the living in a capitalist society is a coercive element because if your healthcare, your housing, and your uh, and your food source are all reliant upon that wage you earn, the removal of that wage is coercion, right? Like, we get this already for the most part, like, right? Like, most of you in chat understand this concept inherently already. But ANCAPs don't. Right-wing libertarians don't. They argue from a different position, and they argue in bad faith. Rothbard argues in bad faith. He knew what he was doing. So it, it is a thing, and we're going through it. We're, we're going through it section by fucking section by section, and we'll probably do a couple more sections tonight. I want to get this done. We did, we did th four sections last night. Yeah, we did 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. We, we got, and it was, for those that were here, it, it was a, it was a low viewership stream. I'll tell you that right now. It was a low viewership stream. It's rough doing pure theory. Like, this is pure theory. All right, sometimes we will talk about theory, but this is pure theory. Um, citations... That sort of thing. Um, it, it's fucking rough. But for the ones who can hang, the ones who are there for it, like Sugar Taco learned a lot. Yeah, if you fucking hang through it, there's a lot of fucking information that you get. Um, studying social policy and what I realized was the least likely in the UK to accept people from state schools. I think I need to take a look at this myself. I was confused at their logic a lot of the time. Um, it, pff, tech support. Don't ever apologize for not being here. Um, I, I'm, I'm thankful for every second I see you guys. I'm thankful for every minute we spend together. It's still, like I say every time, it, it weirds me out that this is even a thing. So, like, I get it. But, 
don't worry because like I said, the whole thing's going into a YouTube playlist. I am going to compile this entire fucking document into a YouTube playlist and then you can just have it. Karina, <laughs> thank you for the host. Um, you guys can just work through it then. That's, that's, that's what we're, what I'm doing because like, like I said, this is, this is absolutely fucking ridiculous that I have to have this conversation with people that people actually consider themselves anarchists just because they're against the state that, and they don't understand, like they don't perceive the fact that state is required to maintain capitalism. Like. I have no idea, Karina, but you just did it. Um, no, Aspen. No, that's not allowed because banned. And ban evasion will get your fucking primary account terminated. Yeah. Somebody can prove you did a ban evasion. Your primary account get, it gets fucking... Yeah, no. Um, oh, my God. So, yeah, that's what we did last night. We did that for, like, a couple of hours. Like, maybe maybe three, something like that. I don't know. I can tell you... Um, let me see. Hang on. I can, I can tell you the total time we spent on that. Two hours. We spent two hours, re like, literally... Yeah, Kes. Yeah. Straight up. I won't get into the drama on fucking on stream. There's no point in that. It's just petty. Um, but if you want behind the scenes, I'll tell you sometime or somebody else will DM it to you. Somebody will fucking tell you, I'm sure. Um, in your opinion, what's the end goal of being an anarchist? How would society run after the destruction of the state? Comrade Messiah, welcome. And, um, let me introduce you to a phrase that anarchists are a fan of. Um, Marx had a version of it. Um, anarchists have a version of it. There is no project of projects. Okay? There are, different, there are different types of anarchists. There are anarchists that would focus on socialism or communi communism or God, God help you, primitivism, um, tech support. Thank you. Um, but at the end of the day, Anarchism is about a grassroots, um, a grassroots individual autonomous um, power dynamic that is created to interlace, uh, to create a distributed network topology, right? Your social fabric is built up of the people who interact in that social fabric rather than a top down. It's a bottom, uh, a bottom up. It's actually a hierarchical. It's a horizontal. So it's a flat plane of interwoven nodes on a network, right? So knowing that. How am I going to tell you what your society is going to look like, right? Like you and I have to sit down and have that conversation, right? Like we as a community, there's like 48 people in here right now, right? We would have to sit down if we were starting a commune and do some consensus decision making. We'd have to arrive at a consensus. There's no way for me to predict that. There's no, there's no, um, there's, there's no prescriptive version of anarchism. Oh, that's adorable. Thugna, you'd just be steamrolled by a mob that builds a militia. I would point you to the Black Army and Nestor Machno, anarchistically organized militias that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Red Army. And only through um, some backdoor uh, double dealing by Lenin, the second time around, did they, the Red Army manage to, uh, manage to best the Black Army. Okay. So Soviet fucking Russia, near the height of their power, by the way. So they bested a lot of people, authoritarian states, parliament, uh, parliamentary states, and democracies all alike. Um, so communism is the end goal in a way. Um, it, for many people, Messiah, for many people. Um, I will tell you that the only way you will get to communism is through anarchism. You cannot get to communism through communism. Centralizing state authoritarianism is not the route you get to a non-state distributed heterarchical system, right? Like, that's not how that works, right? I'm going to heal myself by shooting myself in the shoulder, 
right? That's not how that works. So if you want communism, if you do want a truly stateless, classless society, the way you get there is through anarchism. Exactly, Wither. Yes. How anarchist communities look depends on the conversation you have and agree upon. There's no way. It's not a prescriptive set. It's an interactive set. It's a modality of operation. It's a lens of analysis. Right? Like, there's there's not, like, this is how it works. All right, cool, Kaz. Thugna. The U.S. military got bested by a less powerful agent. So what does that do to your argument? Yeah, a truly superior military force managed to best them eventually. They kicked the shit out of a whole lot of other people, though. And they secured their own region. And anarchistically op operated communes in Spain during the Spanish Civil War provided 50% of agriculture and industry for the entire fucking region. Right? The most expensive, most well-equipped military in the history of the globe got the shit got their shit kicked in by a bunch of Vietnamese farmers. So what does that do to your argument? What's the point of your argument? What, what what's your point? The Anarchistic Republic of Cospia lasted against papal states, against the, the entity that is the Catholic Church for 375 years without a military, without police, without judges, lawyers, cops, without fucking politicians, without any of that. Longer than the U.S. So what's again your point? So it's happened, you went to the Taliban. Holy shit. So it's happened multiple times to the U.S., by the way, that we've had uh, that the most powerful, well-funded military in the history of the world has had their shit kicked in by a less powerful force. So, again, what's your point? Also, by the way, we got taken over. We we're an oligarchy anyway, right? Like a bunch of non-militarized entities managed to conquer this country anyway. Later, Messiah. Take care of yourself. Uh, enjoy your food, whatever it may be. I hope it's tasty and nutritious and healthful. So, again, what is your point? I don't understand your point. Except it has. It's shown it can. It wasn't a well-organized mob with guns and armored vehicles. It was one of the most powerful militaries in the history of the world. That was only beat by, because of it was outspent by the U.S. military. That's it. And again, I can show numerous examples of anarchistic societies throughout history and contemporarily that exist within neoliberal capitalist spaces and defend themselves just fine or militaristically take over entire regions. The Zapatistas uh, are not exclusively anarchists, but they use anarchistic organizing principles. Plus, Cospia managed to carve out a region for themselves for 375 years without even using a military to do it. The Black Army, under the, uh, uh, under the uh, sort of direction of Nestor Machno, but he was not the leader because they were anarchistically organized. He just inspired them. Um, managed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fucking Red Army numerous times. They bested them many times in battle. Right? Like, this is... I don't understand your point. Do you think anarchism is, like, every man and woman for themselves and it's pure chaos? Do you think that's what anarchism is? Because you're wrong. If that's, if that's your interpretation of what anarchism is, then you need a poli-sci class. Oh, wait. You just walked into one. No, you have no state. There's a difference. In chat. Let me help you out. We have commands for these sorts of things. 
Zomia kind of exists as well, which is hilarious. Like it, it, it it's a loosely associated federation. <sighs> really interesting. So we need to pop this fucker out. All right, let's do a pop out. Are you a sea lion? Did you read the definition? Um, thugna? Uh, did you read the definition? It got put into chat. Here, I'll read it for you, since I know reading isn't everybody's strong suit. Anarchism is a wide river with many streams and tributaries, so you'll find many differing answers. But essentially, and in my opinion, it is a collapsing down of unjust hierarchical structures into a hierarchy, a system of organization where the elements of the organization are unranked or horizontally, and a philosophical challenging of power and authority mechanisms. There is no perfect expression of, or utopia of anarchism because anarchism is not a philosophical or ideological monolith. It's a varied network of ideas, and in the words of Emma Goldman, we much prefer it that way. <clears throat> oh, I want you to sell me on it. Oh, interesting. Well, my... Your wish is my command, Master. So, how do I sell you on the validity of something that has existed into prehistory? Something that is a foundational techno social technology that indigenous societies the world over have used. How do I sell you on something that has created entities that have lasted for longer than the United States has existed as an entity? How, how do I sell you on something that the United States Department of Defense, and even so far as the British Architectural Association has studied and found to be more resilient in times of crisis and a more dynamic, fluid, uh, and beneficial experience to both business, military organization, and social organizational groups. How do I sell you on something that even the Catholic Church has studied? What, what, what do I need to do then to sell you on this topic? Please, I'd love to know what hurdles I have to clear First, they exist all over the world. You do realize that anarchism isn't like Libya, right? It's not like United States. They don't form countries. They form organizations. They form groups of interconnected relationships. Right? Like, this is, yeah, Gus, it, it, anarchism is factory default. Right? Like, but how should he move the goalpost if he nails it down? I know, right? So, how, how, what, what part of this is difficult for you? Do you need me to, like, walk you into a, an anarchistically operated commune? Because where are you in the world? Because I'll have to know where you are because then I can arrange for you to go visit some anarchists that operate residential communes, and, uh, artist spaces, uh, worker cooperatives. I, I'm going to need more information because they exist all over the globe, sometimes numbering in insane numbers. But you're not interested in that, are you? Zomia. Mayo monkey. They're like, um, they're almost like the, the sovereign citizens are almost like new age crystal people, right? They, they believe in a form of magic that doesn't really exist. So <laughs> thanks, Deirdre. Um, like they think if they say the right set of words, and they reference the right document 
or obscure text that somehow they're they're mystically and magically uh, exempted, right? That the state will somehow back off of them. It's not how it works. On principle, yes, yes. The, you see the the golden fringe on the flag indicates that it's uh, that it, that is a naval flag that shows that the law of the uh, the law of the oceans, the law of the sea, are being applied within the admiralty flag. That's the admiralty flag, and that's being applied. Yeah, I, I trust me, Mayo. I know. Um, that's not how it works, right? Like in practice, we know how that plays out. It's, it's, we've, we see it all the time, right? Sovereign citizen videos with cops pulling them over. I have a right to travel. I do not re, uh, I am not engaging in commerce. Therefore, I do not require, I am not required by, uh, by law to have a driver's license. Click. They hook them right up and take them to, uh, like, take them to fucking jail, right? Like, it's, it's, it's not a thing. The, the, the magic words don't work. The spell cannot be cast. So on principle, I actually kind of agree with them, right? Like on principle, a lot of what they're saying, now not the weird fucking conspiracy shit like, you know, the admiralty flag and shit like that, right? But on principle, did you sign the contract? Right? Like, did you agree are you in consent with this system? Are you being coerced or oppressed? Can you agree to a legal contract in which the uh, the uh, the contract writer is coercing you? Right? Like on principle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because, I mean, anarchists would agree. Like, you, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, and it's an inherently coercive and oppressive hierarchy. Therefore, any operation within it is uh, done in bad faith. Like, that's, that's anarchist analysis 101, right? Like, I get it. But just because you, you say, you say the, the magic words that, you know, I'm not driving, I'm traveling, and I have a right to travel. Right. Driving is a privilege. Traveling is a right. I have a right to travel. Therefore, I am not driving. I am traveling. I'm not engaging in commerce. Therefore, right. Like this sort of shit, this this like magic language that they rely upon. That's where they get fucking weird and conspiracy and goofy and shit about it. And it's like, look, underlying all of that. Yeah, there's some solid arguments. But then, you know, there's some weird white supremacy overtones or undertones, depending on who you're talking to. There's a whole bunch of fucking sort of usually misogyny, some patriarchy. Like there's a whole bunch of bullshit that then gets wrapped up because the people who are attracted to sovereign citizen stuff are usually social and uh, social conservatives. They're usually uh, prepper types. They're usually isolationists. It's, it's a whole fucking thing usually at the end of the day. Right. So, but like I said, on like, you know, some of the underlying principle I at least understand and relate to and get. Fair enough for twos. Quantum grammar postmaster general weirdos is the next level of sovereign citizen, sovereign citizen LARPing. Um, let's see. Sugar, they're nuts and they have supremacy undertones, like I said. Um, that's, that's, there are my opinions on it. Um... Are y'all still playing with him? Uh, whatever. Um, oh, God, I don't, I, I'm, I'm dreading it, but I need to do more theory.
<laughs> Get your bingo cards. Oh. Hey, hello, my ace. How are you, my ace? Um. I propose I propose a consensus standard for live streams. Anyone interrupting Dgen story time is immediately timed out if they don't respect the shushing. One strike. DST is a sacred uh, Dgen story time is a sacred community spiritual practice, and as one of the uh, thirty ordained in this community, I say so. You know what? I'll second it. If anybody wants to vote on it, Zippy's literally running a reaction vote on Discord. Um, so if you guys want to vote, go into the, the comments in Discord and click the check mark or the X. Um, and we'll, we'll see if we don't want to enact that as policy. If you interrupt DST, then you get shushed. And if you do not get shushed, you get timed out. Um, Structural anarchism manifest. Oh, Jesus. Really? Oh, fuck me. I'm already going to do I square. I'm already going to do so much reading with the, the fucking the the ANCAP thing. I will do a look. I'll do a little bit. I'll, I'll I here's what I'll do square. I will give you your points back and I will do a small excerpt fr uh, from structural anarchism manifesto because it's it's fucking goofy as shit as far as linguistically go it linguistically goes. Um but I'll, I'll give you a paragraph or two. And I'll do it for free. There you go. Uh, do ordained ministers get that special purple roll? They do, Buddhist. The, the, the ordained ministers um, have the purple, the, the, the purple coloring on their name. Although, do we agree asking for details and precisions during DST is interrupting? Cor correct. For two. So we're, ta we're talking uh, Buddhist. Are you are you a, an ordained minister? Kez, you're an ordained minister as well? All right. Well, I need to add you to the list then. Um... JK, oh, Jesus Christ, there's so many fucking members. Ah, oh, probably ordained. There we go. Okay. Uh, Line Sean, I've been an ordained minister for 19 years now. We just passed the the anniversary. Um, hang on, let me let me get my list though. Okay, Buddhist, you were already on the list. Oh, all right, sorry. Yeah, you two were already on the list. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, you're good. I don't need proof. I just need you to like confirm, tell me that you are one, and then yeah, like uh, Buddhist and Kez, you're you're just um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pertus, I agree, I agree. Like if you're if you're asking questions, you're looking for details during DST, um, then by all means. Um, all right. Oh, let's go. Let's go into the back. All right. This is so not easy to read. Oh, you know what? Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Just bear with me here. Yes, there we go. There we go. All right. So. Okay, so that'd be 54. All right. the Jesus Christ billionaire. One of these days I'm going to fucking sit him down and teach him how to format a document.
There you go. All right. I don't. Yeah, I can't. I can't. No, again. Oh, th you know what? I'm going to do this reading. Thugna, do you want to come on the air? Because apparently you need to be handheld through this. I literally gave you a channel definition. I have been studying th uh, anarchist theory for over a decade now. I've been a direct action and street level anarchist for 20, 25 years, something like that. Um, do you want to come on the air and discuss this topic? It doesn't mean no government. All right. It means no state. There's a difference. And if you don't understand the difference between a state and a government, then you need hand-holding through this. So I need to do a reading first. So I will get around to you, but... Um, I already... I've already forgot. Um, a maniac. Uh, all right, square. Here you go. Wrong document entirely. All right. Let me minimize that. Let me drop this over so I can see you in chat. All right. Oh, no. Square. Not this. This is... Dude, Square. This is advanced as fuck. The Structural Anarchism Manifesto is advanced. We're talking... Like, we're talking remedial class for a thug. That's not... Dude, Bella Mare is the sort of shit you get to when you, <laughs> you've you run out of literally all the theory. Um, all right. This is, this is from Section 5, the conclusion of the logic of structural anarchism on the political economic framework of structural anarchism. 54, subsection A. The main objective of the logic of structural anarchism or any pragmatic revolutionary evolutionary project bearing its name is the displacement and or dislodgement of the logic of capitalism from its central position within all socioeconomic processes, all socioeconomic frameworks, and all decision-making authority in and across the military-industrial complex. The main objective is the repositioning of the logic of capitalism to the socioeconomic periphery of society as a secondary or minor consideration element, all within socioeconomic processes and all decision making authorities. The logic of capitalism can be outmoded and antiquated via the more intelligent and the more organized polyrationality of structural anarchism, which can render the logic of capitalism obsolete, propelling it to the periphery of all socioeconomic processes, frameworks, and then by extension all decision-making authorities. The logic of structural anarchism then can return the logic of capitalism to its natural state as an auxiliary to the workforce population via micro-revolution of everyday life, i.e. not little nonconformist anti-capitalist diplomatic insurg uh, insurrections within the micro-recesses of of everyday life, which can escalate into radical social change. In consequence, the main objective of the logic of structural anarchism and its micro-revolutionary project is about overturning the logic of capitalism back onto its feet again and onto the margins of socioeconomic existence. The micro-revolutionary project of the logic of structural anarchism is about inverting the logic of capitalism right side up again in its rightful logical position as a marginal appendage of the workforce population via microscopic nonconformist anti-capitalist insurrection within those micro-recesses. The main objective returning the logic of capitalism to its rightful logic state as the marginal auxiliary tool by which the workforce population placates its internal and external logical necessities before those of the logic of capitalism, namely the instrumental rationality of socioeconomic domination. There's two paragraphs. I told you I'd give you two paragraphs. Bella Mare, man. Bella Mare. <laughs> One of these days, uh, one of these days, I'm gonna fucking sit sit him down. One of these days, I'm gonna sit him down. Oh. 
Yeah. Uh, this is, dude, Square. Bellamare taught me about, like, literally taught me about um, the uh, microfascism, microrevolution processes. And it was fundamental to my Thesugian methodology that I then created. Right, the Thesugian methodology that is instrumental in my uh, my particular form of activism and anarchism is literally founded upon the the lodestone of it is um, Bellamare's concept of micro uh, micro fascism and micro revolution within everyday recesses. Right, like that's that's he he literally gave me the the cornerstone of my philosophy in that w with that concept. I was like, you're right. People don't know how to revolt. People have a, a, a fictional meta narrative derived from the French Revolution still. This is how you end up with MLs and shit talking about like the revolution in the streets and shit like that, right? They, they have no conceptualization of the fact that the, the proletariat, the masses, have no uh, um, touchstone. They have no relevancy point. They have no reference point to what it means to revolt. And so you have to teach them how, and you have to teach them how you can't start with, you don't fucking build a skyscraper as your first building project, right? As an architect or an engineer, you're not like, I'm going to build the world's tallest building. It's my first project out, right? You start small then you build up, right? So that's, it's like that, like th that's sort of where that comes from. So get in voice chat. <laughs> Any recommendations for something a little less on the theory side, a little more on the history? Um, yeah. Yeah. For Tuse, it's fucking huge as shit. But go with go with Peter Marshall. His, it's hugely historical. Go with demanding the impossible. And for Tuse, you have a library card. You know where to find it. Um, so, yeah, go with demanding the impossible. Um, I swear to God, those stupid wavy emo, uh, fucking things are going to be the death of me. Um, fuck the French Revolution. We need the lifeboats of anarchism in the face of the Bronze Age collapse style cataclysm. Um, you don't know architects, it seems. Viva, um, the only architect that you need to know is Neil Breen. <laughs> oh, Neil, I love you, man. Um, all right, I'm going to need you to give me a, a sound check. Count to five, please, and thank you. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, I know you're against categorization, but we are all subjects to our environment. You sound like an American to me. Yes, I'm an American. Okay. Well, we are all subject to propaganda and information sets and educational styles. There's no way around that. Um, let me turn this down. All right. Hey, Bidouin. <clears throat> uh, what's up, Bidouin? Uh, they could have just said that it was a reasonable and rational and relegate capitalism to the periphery of it. Oh, no, no, no. Bidouin. Bidouin. Bellamare speaks that way intentionally. He is he purposefully writes in an, uh, in an obfuscated, opaque manner in order to uh, prevent, like, the everyman from reading it. It's it, it, it literally Bellamare does not want the person on the street reading his theory. He wants theory heads, academics, and organizers reading his theory. And so he literally intentionally writes in an obtuse manner that it requires some level of academic expertise and understanding to to penetrate. It's it's the opposite of what somebody like Saul Alinsky does, Bedouin. It's crazy, but there's a re, there's a method to the madness. Anyway, back to you. How shall I refer to you? Um, you can call me Thugna. Okay, Thugna. Um, so let's start here. Okay, anarchism is a not a. It's not a government. It's not a state. It's not a country. It's not a company. Right. It's a philosophical, ideological set of tools that are used as a lens of analysis and setting up or what we call organizational modalities or methods of doing things. Mm -hmm. All right. So a company can be organized anarchistically. A worker cooperative can be organized anarchistically. A community can be organized anarchistically. A residential neighborhood could be organized anarchistically. A global, uh, a multinational operation could be organized anarchistically. 
a military unit can be organized anarchistically. Can a state be organized anarchistically? No, because a state doesn't meet the uh, the philosophical hurdles that would put up be, uh, that would justify its claim to authority. Okay. See, there's, so, there's a series so of an- underpinnings that go along with the, the meta-ethical and ethical analyses part of this toolkit that is anarchism. And there okay. is a political science distinction between anarchy, anarchist, and anarchism. Anarchy is seen as the um, sort of the pre-formalized uh, methodology of operation that is, op- uh, that is utilized by indigenous societies and has been a, defa- a de- factory default setting in many societies across the globe for thousands and thousands and thousands of years now. Anarchists are the formalized theorists that developed later on, and anarchism is that set of theories and ideas that are developed by those anarchists. Okay, so you're you're making a distinction between anarchy and anarchism, is that correct? I, I am, but also the International Encyclopedia of Political Science would as well. Okay, so anarchy would be defined as no government then. Anarchy would be defined as a hierarchical organizational structure that lacks a state, not a government. So anarchy can still have a government. A government is just a methodology of operating uh, that the people have formalized. Okay. Unless you're reliant upon the literal Latin etymological definitional set of uh, government, which means uh, mind control. (laughs) So you're not opposed to government? No, you can have a government, but it needs to be organized anarchistically, in my opinion. Preferably. What kind of government? do you support a consensus a, a anarchistically organized consensus di- um, based style of system um what about democracy democracy is, okay? is democracy is okay if you end up with at least approval voting and a, a, a liquid democracy it's a step what, in what the right you, direction say that again liquid democracy mm-hmm. what is that Liquid democracy is, rather than a representative set, set it's a delegative set that in which you can retract your, uh, your, uh, your, con- your uh, consented power at any given time. So basically imagine that rather than electing a representative, you select a delegate. This delegate is empowered to speak or vote or um, uh, act on your behalf. But at any given time, you can retract your, um, your power from them. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. I don't have a problem with that. Do you, um, I mean, do you know what we a, already... No, we don't. Go ahead. Do you, um, we don't by a mo- long shot have that. Um, I mean, there, there are like recourses. Like, I'm not trying to defend uh, yeah, it's, the you know, system it, of it's government in, in America. It's instantaneous. It's it's right. it's not okay. like overnight a delegate could have no power. Um, that's that's how a liquid democracy can uh, functions. Are you familiar with approval voting? Because that's my well, other condition on on your democratic ideal. No, I'm not uh, familiar with approval voting. Okay, I would suggest the primer video on the three prime uh, the primer video on YouTube on the three styles of voting. And they will literally use CG, uh, like computer graphics and like uh, data sets to show you how um, spoiler votes are minimized under approval voting and that sort of thing. So how would you recall a delegate? Like how would that it depends. That it depends what it, what methodology that the people choose. You could do it by paper. You could do it by phone. You could do it by Internet. You could do it by a town hall meeting. The methodology by which you do it really is unimportant at the end of the day. You could do it high tech. You could do it low tech. It just depends so, on the level, the scope and scale of the system and the tonality of the system that you're implementing it within. If you're doing it in an apartment complex, residential, like, you know, commune sort of setting, then you just fucking call a town hall meeting or something, right? Like you do an email blast and say, we're having a town, town hall meeting tomorrow and, you know, we're that. Or, you know, if you're doing it at a state level that, you know, you can do it, uh, you could do it electronically if you so chose. Um, it just sort of, or you could oh, do it by a mailer. Right. So it's just popular vote, like if no, if no, no. It's in, it's in, the, it's individual. It's not like you don't become a delegate instantly. It's the fact that your delegate power then decreases. So essentially, imagine a room with fifty people. 
All right. Mm-hmm. Um, we have okay. So let's do fifty people and five people. Right. We've we've uh, we've got fifty five people in total. Five of those people have been selected through a series of processes and conversations. Hey, uh, to Dirty Daddy Pig four twenty. Thank you for the sub. Um, through a processes that has already occurred, five of these people have been selected to be delegates for a project. Doesn't really matter, right? A project. Um, they're, they're empowered to speak, con, con, uh, converse with experts on various topics on behalf of these other 50 people. Now, one of these delegates represents 10 people. We'll do an even split across all five, right? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. One of these represents 10 people and has been speaking out of turn and saying some things that, well, have gotten around and people find questionable, right? Now, these delegates have their own vote. They are people, after all. They have their own voice. They're not extra outside the system. They, they merely have been empowered by this base level of people. Now, those 10 people that, they, uh, that have chosen that delegate get together and they start talking and they say, you know what? John's fucking up, man. John's fucking up. Eight of those people then say, uh, then of what by whatever official mechanism that this group has decided, whether it's signing on a piece of paper, whether it's just sending an email to a coordinator, or whether it's using a fucking I wouldn't do this, but using some sort of like blockchain technology, right, to f- put on a public ledger that this has occurred. Eight of these people say, you know what? Fuck John, he's not my delegate anymore. They don't have to choose a new delegate. They just have the same voting power as those delegates. The delegates represent an aggregated voting block. And so now John only has the voting power essentially of three people. Himself and the two others that have chosen to let him remain as their delegate. The other eight can vote for themselves independently or they can choose to reallocate their votes to a delegate. This is liquid democracy. Okay. Um, I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I'm not really sure what the point of having delegates at all is then, because why wouldn't everyone just kind of vote for themselves on an issue? Because at the end of the day, you're dealing with a scope and scale issue. The point ne- isn't necessarily uh, – in liquid democracy, we're not dealing with small groups of people usually. Liquid democracy – if we were do- dealing with a, um, an apartment complex or like a business or a cooperative of like you know minimal size – 50 to 100 people, I would I would just advocate for, as an anarchist, I would advocate for outright consensus decision-making rather than any form of democracy. Um, and that way you have every single voice represented. And under a consensus decision-making system, every single voice has a veto vote, which I know immediately in your brain, you went to a place of how does anything get done? I assure you it's one of the most effective decision-making processes that are out there. If you want to learn more about it, there's an entire uh, explanation on my website or various YouTube vo- uh, videos to which I can link you to that will explain the processes behind consensus decision-making. But if you were dealing with that smaller group, it like if you were dealing with anything under Dunbar's number, I'd go with consensus decision making. Are you familiar with Dunbar's number? No. Okay, Dunbar is basically a psychologist slash sociologist. I forget which camp he, he laid in, but he figured out that there was essentially an upper limit to the number of people that a human mind can relate to, right? Mm-hmm. 250 to 350, depending on the person is generally what Dunbar's number gets placed at. 250 is the general number that gets spread around. So I would say anything 250 and under, just use consensus decision-making. But for the purposes of discussing something larger, as was exemplified by your uh, your question, I would advocate for like the United States, right? If you wanted to fix the the voting process in the United States, you have, uh, I would advocate for liquid democracy and approval voting style. And the reason you would use liquid democracy, the reason, the reason you use, you would use delegative processes is because every single uh, uh, administrative item up for vote in the United States would basically grind the society to a halt. You need to be able to delegate some of that decision making off. You need to offload some of the administrative cost onto a somewhat dedicated administrative group. Uh, group. And if you look to somebody like the anarcho-syndicalist for scope and scale issues, they also use delegative processes, but the delegates also are rotationally selected. They're, um, they use a strat, it, well, some of them 
use a stratified randomized group selection. So essentially, there's a way to um, stratify or categorize the representative groups of society and then make sure that there is a um, percentage selected based on representation. That way, nobody is getting left out. And then you do a randomized rotation within that set. That way, no single group becomes a political class. You don't have your Nancy Pelosi's or your Chuck Schumer's or your Dianne Feinstein's or your Mitch McConnell's in that style of system because they see the uh, the uh, duty of delegation as part of a, a necessary part of being a, a full citizen that this, this is a thing that you should know how to do as well okay yeah I, I'm not opposed to this um, I I do think that uh, the representative uh, system in America is, is really bad um, I guess like m- where I'm, I'm unclear about is um, like who, who are you sending these delegates to? Like in an anarchist system, um, you you made it pretty clear that you're opposed to states, mm-hmm. right? Um, yep. So so who are these representatives being subservient to? Who are they presenting their concerns to? Um, Do you, okay. So the first thing know, the first thing I have to ask you, like this is, I'm, I'm, and please trust me, you've operated in good faith thus far. I have no hard feelings, but I am going to like ask questions and that sort of thing, trying to feel out what underlying knowledge you may have, and I, there will be ignorances. There's no no uh, ne- negative connotation to ignorance. Willful ignorance, on the other hand, is a problem. Um, but I just need to know what you know and what you don't know, so I can tailor my explanation. Sometimes, are you familiar with um, centralized, decentralized, and distributed network topologies. No. Okay. I know what topology is. Uh, okay. So but, uh, let me let me get an image on screen for you here. Um, and then we will go from there. Because there's a couple of things you need to understand first before I answer that question. All right. <clears throat> All right, let me get chat off that last one so you can see it. All right, so the first one that you're going to see over there on the left is a centralized network. Mm-hmm. That's your dictatorship, right? That's authoritarianism, right? You can see that right out of the gate. That's your dude everything runs through. He, They say an edict, that is how it is. All things flow from them, Right. But this also applies to technologies and businesses. This could be the president uh, and CEO of a company, a privately held company. This could be a centralized technology, say something like, you know, technically we're going to give an example like YouTube, even though their network architecture doesn't isn't centralized like that. But if YouTube says it's gone, it's gone, right? It's all fucking YouTube. That's how it works. It's it's an authoritative decision. It all flows from that central node. The decentralized Mm -hmm. network is more akin to, say, a parliamentarian system or a, you know, a traditional style. And I, I'm going to put democratic in, in like sarcastic air quotes here because the fact of the matter is I think even you would agree we're not truly a democracy. We're, we're an oligarchy. Like the rich and powerful are running this shit, right? Like that's yeah. just... Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, okay. So, but this is, the decentralized is technically, from a technical standpoint, I'm an IT um, guy from way back. Um, th- that's actually how like the YouTube network actually functions, right? There's northeast clusters of servers. There's southwest clusters of servers. But these could be seen as your representative of, you know, this is your senator. This is your representative, this sort of thing. And then they interact in a centralized space. You can see that centralized space as being like the U.S. uh, Congress, right? Like they represent all of these nodes on the outskirts and then they come to a centralized space and they interact with one another. And that's how things happen. Now, the last one is a a truly distributed network. This could be akin to something like BitTorrent or I2P, which is a distributed network topology. This is also how anarchist, uh, anarchist organizational modalities operate. Right. I can you can look at those white nodes and those white nodes can be delegated of powers. Right. All those other blue nodes do not need to have the vote. If I trust this node, this node has been reliable and trustworthy and represents my interests thus far. I can delegate my power to that node and that node can continue to operate. But if that node chooses to go rogue 
I can cut them out in an instant. And this network continues to operate. Nobody loses connection to anybody else, right? So you want to know why you would have those delegates, right? Now, imagine that distributed network is just a town. And then you have, what, a thousand towns in a space. And you have 50 spaces operating within an area, right? So you want to coordinate. All right. So group one, node uh, network one, this very first network, starts doing something. And it's a good idea. It catches on. It could be an ecological change. It could be a business modality operation, uh, a method of operating. It could be any decision that they've choos chosen to go forward with as a group. And it catches on. And they interact with the neighborhood, the, the, uh, with the network next to them, the community next to them. And they're constantly interacting, right? People live over there. They do, they do business over there or however they choose to interact with one another. And that catches on. But the next group over goes, you know what? We've been dealing with, you know, community A for a long time. And they've been doing this thing that's a really good idea. We should talk about that. Delegates from our group should go over there. And talk to their delegates and see how they got that done. And then come back here and inform us is whether they think in, in, their, uh, in their opinion it'd be good. Give us the details. And then all those nodes will say yay or nay on that matter. Right? Now, scope and scale. Stretch this up. Right? So rather than it's just a community versus a community, now you have collectives of communities. You've got those thousand communities in an area. And they're all operating in, uh, tonally in a certain manner. And then another area says, you know what? They've been really productive. And in that last time where, you know, a, an economic downturn on a global scale or a resource scarcity or a pandemic happened, they were really resilient and they did some things that were amazing. We should send delegates from our, de uh, our subset delegates, right? Because what you can do is you've got a thousand of these networks, right? And each one, rather than having these five delegates, which normally interact between each other on a communal level, you have selected delegates from each one. So you've got, a th uh, you've got one out of them that then goes to a regional. And out of that regional representation, they then go to other regional representation. And they talk to those delegates, right? So you're, you're literally distributing the workload. Oh, hang on, let me turn chat back on on that image. Um, you're literally distributing the workload because you don't have time to do that. So what would you go, what is the purpose of doing this? Because eventually you're going to operate a macro network. So this has to interact on some level. It has to have uh, interconnections to each other. That's the purpose of those delegates. Well, I mean, um, so the decentralized um, uh, approach, um, I'm assuming that's that's what you want. No, I want the distributed. The decentralized is what we have now. Okay, okay. D um, distributed, that's what I meant. Yes. Um, so it seems to me that that, uh, that actually was, and you, you did allude to this before, that actually was how most human civilization used to be, right? Is that correct? Many of them, not all of them. There, there are plenty of, uh, of examples where it wasn't, um, but many of the indigenous societies, even on North America, let alone elsewhere, did operate in a hierarchically distributed manner, yes. Like um, city-states? Um... No, no, no. Um, more along... Um, a, a, a tribalistic manner, though I would get in trouble probably with some on the left for using the word tribalistic and unto itself, but I'm comfortable I, using it in this context. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean. Um, but it seems to me that those societies um, were vulnerable to uh, a centralized government, weren't they? Um, in military, in a military context, um, and that uh, they were defeated militarily, weren't they? Um, not i mean this is this is where i would i would put multiple points of contention but i would also also reference you to um tale of twin rabbit or tale of two rabbit whichever name he's using these days for his youtube account who's a press a professor of anthropology specializing in indigenous studies who is also an anarchist 
Um, and he can give you specific examples of how that isn't necessarily um, true, that it was militaristic takeover, when in fact it was a variety of factors. But given my lack of expertise in that field, I would rather I would defer to Rabbit on that matter. But I am comfortable stating that that isn't necessarily true as a blanket statement, really. I'm just thinking about um, like the history of Japan. I'm not going to pretend like I, I'm an expert on the history of Japan, but like it, it's it sounds like that's actually what happened there. That there were many different, uh, you know, sa samurai shogunates, and uh, you know they were you know, factional. They they also fought with each other, um, and you know while they were powerful for a time, uh, they they were ultimately defeated by a centralized government. I would, I would point you to multiple studies, probably from the DOD and, as I said, the British Architectural Association are the two, like, I like to give people two ends of the spectrum, which are, it's, it's wacky as shit that the DOD and the British Architectural Association are studying the exact same sort of organizing modality, right? A strictly, a rigidly hierarchical system, right, such as the DOD, and just sort of a, okay, they run architectural firms, what's their deal, right? Both of these have come to the conclusion, independently of one another, that as far as organizing modalities go, distributed networks are the most resilient form of network operation. Now, one can argue that societies that were distributed fell to centralized societies, but one could also argue that centralized societies fell to centralized societies and centralized militaries have fallen to decentralized militaries. Right. So at the end of the day, what we're not talking about is necessarily the organizational modality being superior or inferior. What we're talking about is a resiliency and a ben net benefit to society moving forward. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I definitely like see some of the wisdom of um, of what you're saying. Of, uh, there distributed. is if you want um, to if you. One of these days there will be, we're, we're working on it and it's, it's basically here. I mean, I'll show it. Um, where's the political science section? And then let's see, is this, I forget which category it's under actually. Um, bear with me, basic definitions, immigration, worker co-ops. There we go. Unarchive it and let's go to that thread. Um, so I'll show this on channel. There we go. Um, top screen. It's going to be kind of difficult to see because it's going to be, and if you're on a phone, it's going to be impossible to see. Um, so there is, this is, this is a segment. This is a section on worker cooperatives, right? Labor managed firms, right? Um, here is, and I'll show it. Um, here is a study on uh, from a professor of economics on why worker cooperatives are more productive than normal uh, more um, normal companies. Right? This this is um, so worker cooperatives, worker organized. Right? This is a hierarchically aligned organizational structure. Right? Rather than bosses and CEOs and the board managing the company, it's literally the people at the bottom managing the company. Right? This is two decades worth of international data here that has been collated into this study and universally they're more productive than normal companies right it they're more work uh, they're more productive than conventional businesses with staff working better and smarter their production organized more efficiently they avoid usual friction between bosses the staff mis misunderstanding and dis disputing decisions resisting unfair work burdens fusing workplace management streamlines operations and saves energy and what some of the more recent studies show that they they survive the downturns in the economic effects like the 2008 credit crisis and then the fucking most recent one the pandemic worker co-ops survive these and this is the power of these distributed modalities and here's the democracy collaborative and then i give a whole bunch of like studies that you should know like you know performance metrics multiple case studies of workplace democracy empirical research on success and failure of worker cooperatives um employee attitudes survival rates um which by the way universally he uh hierarchically organized uh organizations have a higher survival rate than hierarchically organized organi uh, organizations 
it's 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 not even up for debate. Even the DOD came in on that one. That, yeah, um, and and I would uh, I I would agree. I I think um, there are some advantages to having a business structure um, organized like this. Um, I see benefits and efficiency. I I don't actually see many, many benefits to um, you know a hierarchical business structure. You know, with the CEO, the ongoing joke is, you know, you could have a monkey just hitting a, a yes or a no button and it would it would probably do a better job. Um, but I also see like I, I see the wisdom in, in using something like this in business. But for like governments, it's it's different or, or states. It's a little bit different because uh, businesses don't have to contend with warfare. Yeah, they do uh, all the time. Well, I mean, like real violence not uh not um competition with other companies we literally commercialized warfare yeah yeah there, i know that there's there's trillions of dollars on the table dealing in that very factor you're you're talking about private military companies i'm talking about uh, the military industrial complex as a whole yeah and yeah, I'm also referencing things such as the anarchistic Republic of Kospia that without even a military lasted 375 years with the entirety of the Catholic Church and papal states surrounding them and bearing down on them, not wanting them to exist. What, what, what did you say? What, what is this called? Kospia, the anarchistic Republic of Kospia, C-O-S-P-A-I-A. And if you want an essay on it, I can direct you to a link on my website. I wrote an essay on it as well. Okay. Um, they they outcompeted them. It's just at the end of the day, they, they were more productive. They were better at existing than the papal states could be in their entirety as a macro organization. And so, I mean, Nestor Machno, I mean, I know you, you went with, you know, but they got defeated in the end. Everybody gets defeated in the end. Every Every empire has fallen, right? Like, is can you list me the empire that hasn't had the ebb and the flow? No, no, they all fall. Okay, uh, so if if a handful of people, for you know, hyperbolic say, state, uh, uh, for hyperbolic sake, right? If a handful of people can resist the entirety of the power of the Catholic Church from fourteen hundreds, all right, like we're not talking like the Catholic Church today. We're talking the Catholic Church when they could haul you out of your fucking village and burn you alive if they decided they wanted to do it. Right. Like if they could last against them for almost 400 years without a military, even. What do you think the power of that organizational organizational structure looks like at a governmental level? It's insanely powerful. Are you saying that the, the Catholic Church is a distributed? No, the Catholic so Church is the de definition of a centralized government. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was, I was about to say. And it survived. Uh, it was very successful. Um, it was their 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 success today is questionable as to their long term success. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I would definitely uh, applaud or or, or uh, cheer their their non existence uh, of all the vile things. Well, they but have that's done but the, the point is, is that like against the definition of a centralized government, one that literally had the power, the will of kings. And the people like to walk into your town, haul your leaders out, declare them heathens or heretics and burn them alive or draw and quarter them as they so saw fit. In the face of that, a handful of anarchists stood for 400 years. I mean, that's that, some... that, that is interesting. And I will uh, definitely research that. That, that does sound... Um very interesting um, um oh sorry i misspelled it um there you go link in chat right now feel free to click it and use it later um so yeah i, I think um i think annoyed jew also posted uh the wikipedia article. okay um nestor Machno went up against the fucking red army Right, the the anarchists, the uh, the anarchist communes of this uh, during the Spanish Civil War provided fifty percent of agriculture and industry for the entire fucking region, in the middle of a civil war. Right, like this is it's a highly resilient, highly resourceful, highly dynamic 
method of operating that, by the way, is usually the system that happens automatically when everything else goes to shit around you because it's the only one that can and will operate in that sort of situation effectively without oppressing the people. Right. You can make arguments for like, oh, yeah, you know, and the strong man comes to town and does his thing. Right. And shit gets done. But does it get done in a in a way that you really would want to live in? Well, um, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, in a centralized government, there there's inevitably going to be lots of things that uh, we disagree with what our government is doing or a decentralized government uh, would encounter the same problems. And yeah, I, I do see some, some wisdom in uh, a distributed uh, kind of uh, government. Um, but there is one, one more question, and then I will be getting off here because I don't want to take up the entire stream here. Snappy, um, thank you for the sub. Anyway, ask your question. Um, so h how do you deal with the, the issue of taxes? In, uh, taxes aren't in a, a thing under an anarchistically organized system. Um, mm -hmm. you're looking for, why did the bits not pop tech support? Thank you for the biddies, but, um, let me check my alerts really quickly and why that didn't pop. I may have turned them off for, yeah, I disabled them when I was doing a reading last night. Um, thank you, tech support. Um, taxes aren't a thing under like most anarchistically organized systems. You could argue that like the ANSINs, um, syndicalists, um, syndicalists is derived from French syndicat, meaning trade union. So, right. They're, a, they're about a redemocratization of the workplace and a reordering of society around that, but they can still exist within a capitalist framework, but they tend, they trend leftward. They trend towards, you know, socialism and that sort of thing long term, Right. But, they're not a thing because taxes are coercion, right? But you're also looking at privatized, um, privatized commons. So you're looking at the, the nece necessity to collect taxes to provide for the commons because things have been privatized. The order of operations is reversed. See, under a non-capitalistically operated entity, the, pri the commons isn't privatized. So you don't have what, what, to do what, that. What, what do you mean? What do you mean commons? The public land, water, air, the means Roads. of production. Yeah. All of these are. Yeah. And fucking as somebody who grew up on the East Coast. Yeah. Roads too. fucking toll roads, man. Uh, <laughs> fucking toll roads. Oh, uh, um, but yeah, no, the com the the commons is not allowed to be privatized. And so there's no necessity for the appli uh, uh, app uh, application of taxes in that regard. The, uh, the uh, manufacturing of uh, necessities is provided for all citizens, right? Like that's the, the need to create an extra, uh, extra privatized revenue stream in order to do the common good isn't necessary because the common good is the primary focus of the society. All extras then are, depending on their style and decision-making, handled elsewhere. And I won't go into that because there's literally as many people as walking around as styles of handling that. But there are, to suff suffice it to say, there are actually like market socialists and, uh, and non-market socialists, and there's various styles of handling this. And if you really want to have that conversation, there's somebody in community, Irish Swede, who is a dual degreed economist and finance major, who is extraordinarily well compensated within the capitalist system for his expertise on economics. And he is an anarchist. Um, he is an ANSIN actually. And he can walk you through the various styles of economic organization that are uh, sans capitalist modality. But at the end of the day, what you need to understand is that there isn't a necessity for the taxes because the order of operations in the society works for the people, not the other way around. So education is provided for. The, the food is provided for. The housing is provided for, right? And not in some weird communist block. We put everybody in the same housing style of methodology. There's a variety of ways to handle this. But at the end of the day, that's what you need to understand is there's no need for that coercive element because the society is actually operating for the people in the society rather than the elite few. So there's no need for for uh, the flow of resources isn't just constantly going up and you need to capture it on the way to make sure that there's shit at the bottom. 
The, well, o- I, the only necessity for taxes under an anarchistically organized system would be an intermediary system in which you want to essentially redistribute resources. Well, that I, I definitely don't um, like the, uh, the, the coercive um, nature of taxes. And I always see taxes as one of those few things that is a necessary evil. Um, I guess I don't see how you're able to accomplish the needs of, of a society, whether it's roads, Medicare, uh, you know, providing, you know, basic needs to the people. And also, you know, you know, uh, we were talking about the military before, you know, how do you, how do you create military? Um, I don't see how you can do that without taxes. Um, Might I make a suggestion? Okay. You may never get there without some really interesting experiences. Here's, here's, here's the truth of the matter is, right? You're, you're an American, right? We're all subject to formative processes. There's no way around that, right? Like you're, you're born in a place and unless you get the fuck out of there soon, it leaves an imprint on you. We know that. That's just the reality of being a human. That's the reality of being a social creature. I would suggest that due to the fact that you are literally immersed in an inherently coercive, oppressive, hierarchical capitalist system, that the thought processes required to actually grasp some of these concepts are potentially beyond you as you sit right now. I'm not saying it's beyond you. I'm just saying as your current data set stands, as your experiential data set stands, Understanding how that's even possible is difficult. There are ways around this. Most people don't learn by theory. It's the truth of the matter, right? 90% of people learn by experience. Maybe 10% can sit down and like read the book and understand the theory. It's a rarity. So I could point you to all the theory books in the world, but it probably wouldn't do much good at the end of the day, right? So what I would tell you is that you actually need to go and work with anarchists, right? Like you need to get your hands dirty. You need to get in a worker organized anarchist co-op. You need to work at an anarchist coffee shop. You need to go to a commune. You need to go to something like Trumbleplex. I don't know where in the country you are, but Trumbleplex is outside of Detroit. There's, there's various organizations in and around the country and you can find them, but Trumbleplex is an anarchistically operated residential commune with art spaces and their own internet and uh, a theater and all sorts of things, right? And so to understand how you can do this, how can you operate a space without taxing the people inside it, right? How does that work? You're probably going to need to actually live it. I mean, I, I would love to see it. Um, it, uh, you know, it's, it needs to be proven to me. You know, I would have to see it in action. And, and um, that's what I'm telling you is I, I, I don't think like just having this conversation with you and this is not a, like, this isn't a criticism. This is just the truth of the matter. I don't think you'll ever be able to understand this, this particular topic because you're an American, right? Like, that's just the truth of the matter. Like, this is, if you want to, like, one of the examples I give for this sort of thing is the Corsini Encyclopedia of Psychology, Volume 2, page 811. It's the start of two meta-analyses that um, basically study individualistic societies versus communalistic societies and the empathetic response rate, The dist- uh, what's called a circle of empathy, right? There's two measures of empathetic response, depth and distance for all intents and purposes. I really feel it, but do you really feel it for the person next to you or do you really feel it for the person on the other side of the globe, right? There's actually differences in the empathetic response distance based on whether you're from a communalistic society versus an individualistic society. Somebody who grows up in a communalistic society feels an empathetic response for people. Now, the depth they feel is dependent on par- parenting and environmental and their, you know, them themselves and those sorts of things. But the distance is highly dependent on the structure and style of society that they're raised in. 
the communalistic will feel it at much further at a distance, whereas the individualistic society is highly restrictive at the distance that their empathetic response actually occurs. There is literally limitations placed on our psychology based on the society in which we are raised. And you and I were raised in America, right? And the only difference between us really at the end of the day is I grew up in Vermont. I was surrounded by anarchists. I've in, been involved at street level anarchism and I've done a shit ton of theory on top of it. So I can not only grasp it intellectually, I've seen it at work. That's what you're going to have to probably do is you're going to have to go out and seek it out. I would suggest Food Not Bombs. It's a great organization. If you want to volunteer, it's anarchistically organized. They operate in like well over 100 com- uh, countries around the globe. All they do is feed people with no conditions attached, right? If you need a meal, you can show up where Food Not Bombs is and they will feed you. Um, There's always anarchists there. So if you want to find more anarchists, if you want to find more anarchist activities, if you want to find anarchist communes and organizations and groups doing stuff, use Food Not Bombs as a rallying point. Go volunteer, go make some soup, go serve some people, and go talk to some anarchists. Well, um, thank you for um, you know answering my questions and uh, having this discussion with me. I, I'm not uh, saying I'm really swayed on any issues, but uh, you have given me some you know um, places to at least uh, study and research a little bit further. If and you, I appreciate the discussion. If you want, um, in chat, get this li- this link as well. There's a reading list. Start with The Government of No One by Ruth Kinna. Pull the reading list. Just remember Ruth Kinna, The Government of No One. Start there, right? That will teach you about a lot of anarchism, different styles, people, history, right? Um, Where is it? It's not that huge of a book. It's this big, right? Manageable size, right? It'll teach you a lot about anarchism, and it'll answer a lot of the questions that you may have, and it's a good starting point. But if you have other questions, you can always come back and there's tons of reading material in that list if you want to understand some of the theory behind it and expand it and the list is broken into segments like beginner and more intermediate and i want to be a fucking theory head level um even kids level um so like yeah pull the reading list but i would suggest start with the government of no one by ruth kinna and that'll answer a lot of your questions that you probably still have it's a good starting place at least well if it um can answer the question on uh, how to create things and, and do things for the people without taxes. You know, that would be great. I would. That would be great. I would also suggest read uh, "Rules for Radicals" by Saul Alinsky. Rules for Radicals. Okay. <laughs> it won't teach you anything about anarchism, but it'll teach you about activism and organizing. Mm-hmm. And that's a key thing to understand first is how to motivate people, how to coordinate people, how to operate with people. But then, yeah, Ruth Kinna will teach you the various about the various forms and historical and contemporary forms of anarchism and some of the key figures in it and some of the philosophical underpinnings of it. If you have more questions beyond that, then you go to Peter Marshall. This, this is Demanding the Impossible by Peter Marshall. All right, this is a history of anarchism. This is basically, while not entirely Eurocentric, highly Eurocentric um, history of anarchism. And then if you had questions beyond that, I have even more texts that I can point you to as to how the Koreans have done it, how the Japanese took a swipe at it, how, um, you know, even some of the Chinese um, before Mao. Oh, fucking Mao, man. Um, yeah. So, but start with The Government of No One by Ruth and go from there. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for acting in good faith and not yelling gamer words as soon as you came on air. Oh, no problem. I I always act in good faith and maybe we can have another conversation. By all means. My door's always open. All right. Cool, man. All right. Good night. Have a good one. There's our 1%. Everybody just don't expect it to happen for a very long time now. Both, Gothic. I know it's a cop-out, but it's both. Um, yeah. Do not expect that to fucking happen for a very long time to come. <laughs> that was a rarity. 
It was pleasant though. And Thuggin, thanks for thanks for the conversation. <sighs> the unicorn, exactly. Now, um, is there anything in chat that I missed that I needed to address? Um, because I know, like, I wasn't paying attention to chat. Like that. That's sorry, sorry, guys. Um, but <laughs> sippy. Tell you what, they're going. They're going on the. Uh, they're going on the hat. <laughs> um, maniac. Yeah, it can. That's it. It, it can. Um. Ah, <clears throat> uh, wither. Well then. Um. Yeah, it can. If you want an example of that, um, I'm a fucking name check them. Rady, a lady rain cloud got fucking Sansol pulled uh fucking banned because fucking lady rain cloud went all psycho on uh, on Sansol's air. Yeah. Yeah, it is it is entirely possible. Um Uh Charlotte, not really, no. Uh, black, uh, black ginger, uh, black jing, um, yeah, it was, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, something like that. Sansil's on back on the air. It was like a three day ban, something like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, Sansil's back on the air already. Um, Thugna, apparently I earned your follow, did I? Th thanks again for the good conversation, Thug. Um, it just allows me to elucidate and elaborate on theory and ideas that some people may not even know they had questions about. So I appreciate it. Um, oh, Gothic, you, you had a, you had a thing. Hold on. Because when I talk about me being single for five years, people say it's all good. Life is very long. When I talk to, about religion to somebody, they're like, life is too short to pray to, uh, to, uh, to a God you don't even know exists. I don't know which to believe. Gothic, it's both. Life is short, man. It goes by in a fucking flash. But suffering is long. Every moment that you're suffering is a seeming eternity. Trust me. I'm physically suffering every moment of every day. I know this. Uh, but no RDF. These are these were chosen by community and paid for by community. Um, when you're suffering... It seems like an eternity, but at the end of the day, you will look back and go, holy shit, man, it just, it went by. Like I was just, I was just 14. I was just 18. I was just 25. I was just 30. I was just, it's fucking rough. Yep. Both are correct. Oh yeah. I could use to, I could use standing up too. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Krusty, while I cry, where did it go? Dude, yeah, for those of you who don't know, Krusty's got a bunch of years on all of us. Krusty, Kru Krusty is, Krusty's ain't, Krusty ain't young anymore. <laughs> young at heart, though, Krusty, right? Um, It's way too cold to wear sk uh, short skirts right now. It's legging weather. Dude, I'm, I'm fucking sweating my tits off here. Like, I'm literally, you see me do this from time to time. I'm sweating. It's fucking hot. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me, I'll be... Still, yeah, like it's not even. <sighs> oh. 
gothic. If you want, dude, I'm I'm in the mode. My oldest grandson is going to be 21. Oh my god, crusty. Um, gothic. If you want to come on the air right now, there's no other. There's no better time than the present. But if you don't want to come on the air, um, thank you, Charlotte. Yes, he's. He's, my, he's the Lord and Savior of Bad Movie Night. If you see this shirt, you know it's Friday. Um, Gothic, if you don't want to come on the air and you just want to talk sometime, just let me know. The man, the myth, the legend. Um, Sticks your head out into the downpour outside. Mm, yes, dude, I'd, I'd kill for some fucking rain. Um, yeah, Gothic, you just let me know what works for you and I will work with it. Um, yeah, yeah, Gothic, just here. There you go. Link in chat, gothic. Oh, shit. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, Charlotte, I would, yes, yes. All films should be made and star Neil Breen. Made by and star Neil Breen. Yeah. Um, it, you should join voice chat. It's the only one you can get to, Gothic. You can't get in on air. I have to move you there. <laughs> Gothic, is your name Goat Perverter? Karina's day at work. Sorry, guys. The rain got too aggressive. We can't paint today. Um, <laughs> how, about, how about the Mets? We're not really football people here. <laughs> That's fucking great. Oh, Yeah, Gothic, join voice chat, and I'll pull you in. Keep in mind, I consider it a failure if we have to talk about philosophy. Just know that. <laughs> Uh, oh. While we wait for Gothic, I'm just gonna. Uh, well, Lada, I just got lazy the last like week. I got lazy. I, I'll, I'll go back. Trust me. I like it. I like the pink. I just, you know, I needed a break. My fingernails needed a break. I needed a break. I love sports ball. <laughs> Move the thing to the other thing. Um... All right, I'm going to need a sound check. Count to five for me, please, and thank you. Yeah, I, 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 know you're, I know you're in, Goth. I need you to count to five for me, please. Um, so no one else ate an entire pizza while well, that was uh, if that was a debate I don't know what the fuck that was just education Zippy that was just me talking spiritually I did why not uh, one day I'll have to get on the air to intellectually masturbate with you Kai we could do the Dutch <laughs> could do the Dutch rudder hey 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 get back here Get back here, motherfucker. I don't hear you, though. No one does. Oh, good on you, Caboose. All 
I love the comments. The ant, the the fucking libertarians and ant caps are already coming out of the woodwork to comment on some of those videos. I literally have a paper proving ant caps are anarchists. Didn't link it. Didn't didn't fucking put it. I love this shit. They're already commenting on the videos. Oh, fuck it. I love that. I literally have a paper proving and caps are anarchists. Do you have a link? Do you have a name? Do you have a fucking, you know, J JSTOR ID number for anything? Anything? Nothing? You just, just nothing? I love these fucking people. Um, okay. So turn off Twitch. Uh, Cassidy is saying that you're having the same problem Cassidy does if you're on your phone to, uh, to turn off Twitch and then try Discord and then maybe it'll work for you. Gothic. Yeah, we see you. I see you muting and unmuting. Oh God, what is this? Oh, I want to talk to you on the air, RDF. Holy shit, do I want to talk to you on the air. Are you really a neocon? Oh, that's amazing. And you have a video called Put Christ First? Oh, God, and you're a Murray fan. I want to talk to you on the air, RDF. All right, Gothic, how about now? You, you, and, oh, God, you're a tech bro. That explains it. Yeah, dude, I spent my life in IT and, and did f four uh, fucking four years, two classes a day for four years of drama plus a touring repertory company. I've spent plenty of time in theater. Dude, we got we got plenty to talk about. Aw, gothic. That's a shame. Well, see if you can't get it sorted. Um, and yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm still, I'm still amused by that. I'm, I'm still looking at the comment. I literally have a paper proving ANCAPs are anarchists. Like, and then does it, does it post the paper? I love it. I love it. Um. <laughs> Charlotte. Okay, hang on. Go to the commons. Oh God, I want to get, I want to get another reading done before we end this stream. Oh, you know what I'm going to do though? All right. While I've got you all here, who here knows they would like to play seven days to die with us? Cause we got a game going, right? Caboose has got it now. Swede has it. Um, fucking I have it. Uh, Karina has it. Cat has it. Right. And we've got. Who, who wants to play Seven Days to Die with us knows they will play Seven Days to Die with us. Not once, not twice, but many times in the future and doesn't have Seven Days to Die. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to give, I'm going to give somebody a copy somebody's getting a copy so buddhist can your game uh, can your street uh can your computer play it
Okay. Do what you gotta do, Gothic. Okay, Buddhist, you're you you will continue to play with us, right? Wait, like, we're not on all the time, but like you know, you seem to be around the same times we are. Like it's normally we get a game in. If we get a game in, it's usually like you know evening and then late night, right? Yes, you can RDF. You can get it on Steam, but don't get it on Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle right now has it for seven dollars and forty nine cents. Right? Um, if you are going to buy it for yourself, there is the link in chat. Um, Buddhist, as for you, Yep, we haven't played yet, Zippy. So, Buddhist, as for you, um, check your Discord DMs. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Hang on. Get count to count to five for me, please, though. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, geez, I have to drive your volume way the fuck up. All right. <coughs> oh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going good, man. How are you doing? Uh, I am adequate. Uh, so far, it's been a halfway decent stream. Uh, oh. So, you know, yeah. Oh, shoulders a little. But I need to get that arm down. There we go. Um, yeah. Yep. So, like, um, uh, so like uh, which part of the United States is you? You're from, like, like which state? Like, if you don't mind me asking. Oh, like I, you, you've, uh, everybody knows where I'm from, uh, where I am. Um, I'm in Las Vegas. Ah, you're from Las Vegas. You, because I was thinking that, you know, it's like almost winter. So like you were mentioning that it's pretty hot down there. So like yeah. if, it's, if it's Las Vegas, then it, it's pretty understandable. Yeah, it's the desert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, did, uh, before I start, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself. I am Gothic Week, but uh, I actually in Twitch, I actually am called Gothic like. Um, on Discord, I'm called Good Perverter, right? And in Twitch, I'm known as Gothic Peep, and I'm from India. Uh, I live in a small town uh, named Shillong, which is in the northeastern part of India. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm currently a college student, and I'm 19 years old, so, yeah. Fair enough. We so, didn't, we, you didn't have to dox yourself that hard, but thank you, though. Um, no, because I just wanted to, you know, like... Yeah. Um, introduce myself to just... I, let you know like what kind of person I am or where I'm coming from. So like, um, so I th oh uh, I, actually, could, I couldn't tell though. I thought you were Vietnamese by your accent. No, no, I'm actually from India. I'm fucking with you, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> so. So I actually wanted to ask you some like um, questions which are not necessarily politics, but I just wanted to ask you, um, like uh. Something about uh, this red pill theory, like uh, I I do believe that you have something, uh, some of uh, some opinion like black pill, red pill, and blue pill because um, I just wanted to know your, just wanted to um, take your advice for like how to deal with um, relationship and stuff. Oh jeez. Uh, um, yeah. Man. Okay. <laughs> Look, uh, here's here's what you you need to know. Um, you need to know something about me before you ask me relationship advice. All right. Um, one, I'm aromantic. I don't do the whole romance thing. Um, 
Oh, okay. So my opinions on that are, are colored from a perspective of somebody who doesn't quite understand how anybody does that in the first place. I tried, I okay. failed miserably. I, it doesn't work in my brain. I caused a lot of pain for myself and another person by trying to force myself into a societal structure that I, I felt was expected of me. Um, uh. So, you know, for that, I, I can't, really, you know, but as an outsider, I do have perspective on um, something uh, on on relationships. Right. There is something to be said about the the independent sort of, you know, cold extrajudiciary opinion on things, um, uh, you know, and two, I'm um, a deviant of epic proportion. Uh, I sleep around like a motherfucker and I'm as gay as the day is long. Um, so you need to know that about me, but beyond that, I think all relationships should come from a place of equality and understanding. And as long as the, the participants in the relationship treat each other, trust each other and, you know, have fair expectations of what they both expect and they, uh, they understand these things, then that should be the, the sort of the foundation of a good relationship. Also conversation, 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 communication is it. It's cliched to say, but communication is the, is the like framework of any relationship. So that's, you, you, say, you say that you, you, you're pretty bad with relationship stuff, but to be honest, you can give more, you are giving much better advice than most of the people who actually know about relationship. And that's very nice, man. Well, thank you. I mean, as per the, the like pilled things, I don't, that's, that's, that's like memefied versions of relationship advice. I don't even address it as a concept. Uh, oh, I see. All right. Uh, actually, I did. I think I did ask you this question before, like uh, today, uh, just today, like like ten or fifteen minutes ago, about whether life is too short or life is too long. Um, because I wanted to, I asked you this question about this black pill and red pill theories because, um, a lot of people, you know, like for like last year till for six months, like I was super depressed and I was like ton amount of alcohol and I was like. Um, I was having a lot of um, problem with my family. I was having a lot of problems. Uh, you're cutting out pretty hard. You yeah. just cut out pretty hard there. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so, uh, like... And now I can't again. Internet is pretty bad, I think. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? I, yeah, yeah. It's intermittent. Uh, it's intermittent, though. It's it's you know we hear you and then we don't. Hey, Baloo. Oh, and gone. Um, RDF. I so want to talk to you, man. I so want to talk to you. Like, come on, nut up, man. You stream. Come on the air. I want to have a talk. I want to. I want to have a conversation with you, man. Come on, man. This isn't some like de debate, bro. Fucking baiting you out, shit. Right? Like, I legitimately. You classify yourself as a neocon. You're a fucking IT guy, and you have theater exp and you like the theater, right? Like, we got we got shit to talk about, man. Get on the fucking air. Welcome back. I'm sorry, my internet is horrendous, and the Discord, the mobile, the mobile version of Discord is just like it's going crazy right now. Yeah, yeah, that happens. Um, look, you know, if if we can't make it happen right now, then by all means, in the future, like I, I don't mind. Like it's just, you know, I'm here, I'm here, five days a week yeah. usually. Yeah, because uh, like uh, I also don't want to cause you know like um. Some sort of like trouble because uh, yeah. because danger is bad or something like that. Yeah, you're fine, man. Um, like yeah, if you want, I mean, if you want to type out your questions, by all means, I'll I'll answer them. But you know, yeah, if you just want to wait another time and have a conversation, or you want to do it off air, by all, you know, whatever works, man. It's I've got an open door yeah. and I can make it work for you. Okay, man. Then I I guess we will have a different uh, conversation at a different time because my interests are interested. Sorry. 
Ah, no worries. No apologies necessary, man. But uh, nice sp- nice speaking with you. Um, yeah, man. yeah I'll it's catch you another time. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, R- 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 RDF, why, why are you ignoring me, bro? Come on, man. Get, get in fucking Discord and get on the air. I agree. I agree. Fucking, um, what was that video? What was it? What, who, somebody posted this shit. Hang on. What was that video? Put Christ first. Yes, I'm fucking serious, RDF. I'm not memeing here. You and I got a lot of shit to talk about, man. You and I got a lot of shit to talk about. Like that video fucking put Christ first. I haven't watched it, but we got to talk about that, man. I'm fucking down. I think I look, I think it's mythical, but I think Christ is a great example of fucking behavior. Yeah. Like, dude, we got shit to talk about. There's plenty of material for both of us. Um, Hey, Okra. How you doing, Okra? How's your Friday going, Okra? What do you mean on Twitter? It fucking... Dude, Discord link in chat. Like, there's a Discord command. You've been in here long enough. You've had to have seen that shit go by. Oh, don't. <clears throat> Gothic, don't even, don't even worry about it. Man, I've, the shit I've talked about on air... Ah. The, 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 the amount of, like, exposure I have done of myself on this air, don't y'all ever worry about embarrassing yourselves. It, 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 no need to have any shame in your game as far as I'm concerned. Um, hey, Akka. How you doing, Akka? How's your Friday going? Um... You as well, Maniac. Take care of yourself, Maniac. Pet your puppers for me, Maniac. Because I'm too much of a coward to get a dog. Because, like, I don't want to ever deal with that loss. So, like, pet your puppers for me, Maniac. Oh, man. Miles, I just... I, I Yes. Yes, Miles, I'm interested. But I'm also afraid that I might just slip into sarcastic snide remarks because holy shit man they think they were abducted by aliens <laughs> like <laughs> the fuck man right like that's 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 t- <laughs> i'm worried i'm worried how i might react <laughs> what's up Artie? Uh, uh, nope 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 Nope, stay, stay, stay. What you doing? How you doing, RDF? Oh, we got the same issue. We got the same issue, y'all. Going good, thanks. I, you know, Aka, um... Yeah, Akka, um, dude came through earlier and was like super critical of anarchism and came on the air and he said, you know, well, you may not have changed my mind, but you definitely gave me a lot to think about. And he was receptive and he was a pleasant co- conversation and he was a decent conversationalist. And so, yeah, like early fucking solid. Miles, get me, get back to me. Miles, do you have me on Discord? If so, send me some details. I'm interested. I'm interested, despite despite my joking there. Like, legitimately, I'm interested. I would like to speak with somebody who who truly believes that, like, you know, they they are, um, or they were. Um, wait, did someone fucking? Uh, by the way, we don't hear you, Net. Like. There's, there's no vault. You're, you're not coming through at all, Matt. Um, (laughs) 
Is Sniffing talking to me or y'all? Like, what? what's that about? <laughs> Wilhelm. And, yep, and on a Friday, I'm still impressed with the first guess. Yeah, he was good. Fucking thug and rip. Shout out, man. Fucking, he was, he was solid people. Respect. Um, we'll see if RDF gets it together or not. RDF, you go to voice chat. I'll move you to on air. And if we can hear you, then we'll hear you there. But you go to voice chat. I move you to on air. So if you see you move to on air, just leave it. <gasps> Do y'all want a preview of uh, DGen story time? Or do you, net, uh, RDF, you there? Um, burger, it was. Stop moving. Um, a little rough, burger, a little rough. Um, okay, so here's, 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 here's. Here's the option I'll give you. I can preview it or you can wait until Monday and then you can hear how it played out because the preview may not align with what actually, I swear to motherfucking, this motherfucker right here, RDF, stop moving to voice chat. Once I move you to on air, stay there. Stay. Don't move back to voice chat. We still don't hear you, though. I think it'll be better if we wait. I think it'd be better if we, better if we wait for Monday and we see how it plays out. Uh, Wolfie, no. They were made by um, a former Buddhist monk... Um, I suppose once a monk, always a monk. Um, but, you know, a former Buddhist monk by the name of Tenzin Norbu. He lives in Hawaii these days. Um, and, yeah, um, it's had to be restrung. This one's had to be restrung a couple of times. Um, but I just send uh, send him the beads and he restrings them for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're, they're not a standard Buddhist mala. The bead count is different. They're representative of my belief system that I constructed years ago. Um but yeah, and then this one's just like, it's, it's representative of something else, but you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a different thing. <sighs> he, he, he's moved over to voice chat again. Um, yeah, I know, I know, but like here, let's just, I'm just going to move into voice chat with him. You're not going to see the, the icons, but I'm in voice chat with him right now, right? A little... Hello, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Okay, now we can hear you. I'm going to move you to on air. Stay there, please. Gotcha. Okay, can we still hear you? This is hilarious. How about now? Can we hear you here? Testing one two three. Testing one two three. All right, we'll just leave you here for whatever reason. Um, how, how about this? Well, well, maybe I should just try it on my laptop because I'm trying it on my phone for some reason. It keeps kicking me out. That's 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 fine. Like we can hear you right now. We don't need the on-screen graphic. Everybody knows we're talking to RDF. Uh, that's we're good. We're good. Doesn't matter. It's working. Let's let it work. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't know what it's. This is a new phone. I literally just got this a week ago. New phone. Who dis? Um, 
Let's see. Hold on. I'm going to invite private voice John to do with it. It did nonsense. It fucking did. It worked moments ago. <laughs> like, I don't know what the fucking deal is. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> double Samson. Thanks. Um, uh, Square said, I bet it's a Google pixel. Um, is it? My phone? No. Uh, it's a, it's a Samsung. Okay. Mm-hmm. I haven't had a, I've had one Samsung phone in my life, and I pulled it out. It was the old flip phone uh, years ago. Um, still works. Um, fucking back when phones were, you know, like indestructible. Uh, but okay, so I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you like a couple of quick questions, just affirmatives or negatives, just so I can get some. Like, because I'm an open book on the air, right? Um, we know you're American. Are you actually a neocon? I am a neoconservative, yes. Okay, cool. Um, are you really like computer science and theater? I am studying uh, computer information technology, and I am also studying theater. But for someone posted in the chat that I work uh, in the computer field, um, that I do not. I am not in IT. Okay. Um, I was uh, management of information systems, but um, age four, mainframe terminal, 14, custom programming, 25, uh, independent consultancy here in Las Vegas, servicing like, you know, eight and nine digit type clients. Um, so there's my fucking credentials there. Also, I already said on air, fucking two classes a day for four years of drama plus a touring repertory company. So like I said, we have a lot of shared fucking ground despite the politics. Um, what drew you into, uh, into the, com- uh, the, the computer arena? Well, I had an associate's degree from Rio Salado college and it was just a basic AA. And I said, you know what, um, an associate of arts is kind of useless. And so I need to study something that might get me something where I can actually have a real job. You were looking for uh, the, you were looking for the paycheck, huh? Exactly. I, fair, so I, that's enough. why I'm studying now, um, uh, coding HTML. Oof. Um, dude, it's all fucking dude. Get to, go, go hit up whoever's doing the machine learning, um, shit in your college. Like, dude, they're, they're fucking recruiting them left and right these days. Um, but yeah, um, uh, either way, I was just curious. What, what about the theater? How'd you end up there? Um, that's just something that I like to do on my own, uh, you know, just for fun. It's, I've I've always liked uh, you know the idea of voice acting and stuff like that. So I just said, you know what, let's go you know study theater. So I'm an acting one right now, mm-hmm. and um, I because I have acted once before in a college performance and just just out of a whim, just said, you know what, what the heck, let me try it out, and it was really fun. And I just said, you know what, I really like this, so let me study it because um, I want to mix kind of what I want to do for sorry studying with something I need to do for a job, but also study something that I like for fun. So is there, so clearly you like to be like, you like to be the performer, right? We're not doing fucking theater arts behind the, the behind the set bullshit. Sorry to all my fucking backstage people that made my performances possible. I don't mean that as a pejorative, but for the love of God, put the spotlight on me. Um, so, like, yeah, uh, is there any particular, like, school of acting or actor or style of acting that has drawn you? Do you prefer dramatic? Do you prefer comedy? Do you prefer, like, do you do musical theater? No, I, I, I don't do musical. Um, I don't, I, the last thing I did was um, She Kills Monsters. And so that's, like, a mixture of, like, um, LGBTQ and uh, themes and comedy. And so that's the last one I did in front of those D and D fans out there, you probably know <laughs> what that story is about. I was, um, was going to say, yeah, it's been around for a while. It's like uh, fucking like early 2010s, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's pretty fun. Uh, it was it was a really good experience, and so with me, I just decided to know what. Let me just pursue that, and you know, and see where it goes. Me, I I like the I like the idea of voice acting, um, but I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not musical. Um, I, I, it's not that I can't sing, I'm not, but I'm just not great. I'm not great at it, you know, not terrible. Like you're, you're going to like, okay, boo this man, but it's like, yeah. I'm not excellent. <laughs> Fair enough. 
um, what what aspect of voice acting? Are you one of the voice actors who can do a variety of voices, or you just uh, you have a quality of voice that you can inflect, reflect, intonation, tonation, that sort of thing? You can manipulate your voice enough to do a, a dramatic reading, or are you the, I, think, I can do the I, I, five twelve voices kind of person. I was well. I was always one of those people that could do no, numerous voices, and I had fun with it. And the way I practiced was. I would uh, try to memorize, uh, you know, just films. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I just had a knack with it. And I could just literally go from one character to the next. Can I put <laughs> my, my My mother didn't like that, though. She always wanted me to... She she said, why can't you do that with Bible verses? And I said, sorry, Mom. <laughs> Can you, but, Okay, uh, so we, I, we have a request. Can you do Jordan Peterson? You want... Wait, so you want me to do Jordan Peterson? Yeah, nonsense. What? Because nonsense does a Jordan Peterson image I I impression, and that's it's non so nonsense. Ask, can you do Jordan Peterson? All right, I guess I can give it a shot. Hey, it's all you can do, right? Right. So remember, everyone, remember, you must understand, you must learn and you must recognize that gender is a threat to your identity and we must understand that communism is out there ready to get you so just understand that um, I don't know. Cer certain people are saying they buy it. They're, uh, Kaiser said it's not bad. Um, more, yeah, more Kermit is basically that you need more nasally, like a little more Kermit on it was a bunch of critiques as well. Um, like you need to bring I probably it. Do need to, I, I probably do need to do that more nasal thing because yeah, he does have that. Yeah, he is, he is highly nasal in, uh, in his uh, vocal range. But either way, that was a solid, you know, and you didn't have to default to the, the you know, clean your room fucking th uh, uh, cliche. So like, you know. Yeah, I, I, I could have done that, but I thought, you know what, let me just let me just have fun with it. Prop, props, <laughs> props on being put on the spot and performing. That's not everybody will will do that, like sing and then, you know, that sort of thing. So respect for that, man. Um, yeah, good improv. Exactly. Some sense. Um, nonsense says I am still the king. Um, yeah, nonsense. <laughs> um, fucking yeah. Nonsense does an impression all the time of Jordan Peterson. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it just, you know, yeah, it was like, despite the politics, it seemed that like you and I had a bunch of overlap as far as interests or, you know, areas that we're headed into. Um, since you're still in college, you're fairly young, right? You're like in that 19 to 25 range something like that right no i'm not um i'm actually right now just uh, turned 30 oh uh, look at you going back to school yeah i'm going back to school because um i just needed to find something i just need to start studying and get back into you know finding something that's gonna actually be a real career and a job not just like you know the basic uh nine to five stuff because before because when covid hit um i started i was working uh with the government i was a data entry clerk um, for the census, but that was just temporary and it was good money, but it was just temporary when it ended Obviously, I was without a job and then I said, okay, what can I do next? And then I started working, um, you know with a company um, that was doing COVID testing and uh, I did that for about 11 months uh, almost a year, but then I but I quit that because the company was taking advantage of the workers and I just said I just kind of like got fed up with it. And I said, you know what, you know, guy, you, and I, cause I, that's what, that's what I said to my supervisor. I was like, look, um, I'm getting exploited here. I'm sick of it. You tell so-and-so just to, to, to get us help or I'm going to walk off today. Cause this has already happened for two weeks. I'm sick of it. And they didn't respond for an hour. And I said, all right, well, it's been nice. Have a good day. Thank you. I'm gone. So what you, what you're saying is the the, the workplace needed uh, uh, a little bit more democracy and representation for the workers. Uh, what I s I'm saying is that the workplace needed to understand that look, if you're going to require us to work this long, hey, pay us a little. Either a pay us a little more, or b get us some more help. And the the thing is, they 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 kept saying they were trying to get help, but we never really they, the, the help was always inconsistent there would be someone mm. there was two people at a site sometimes they'd have a third but they were never consistent they never popped up like always popped up when you needed them because the thing about the COVID testing is that 
Um, we were this is this is summer and this is central Arizona. I'm outside in the sun all day, and it was good money. I'm not. It was like sixteen dollars an hour, but it wasn't the best. And when you're literally working out all day in the sun, no shade, pretty much, you know, surrounded by cars, you know, trying to get them checked in, trying to get them tested. It's like you know when it and these lines are full. It's not like, um, it, it's not like it wasn't like um like in like in uh, around uh, June or May when things started to die down. Because when the um, things spiked here in Arizona, the people, the lines just went through the roof. And so it was literally almost night and day. And so the company was just not prepared for it because they thought that it was going down. And so they started letting people go. And it was just when they started letting people go that everything went back up. And it's like, oh, wonderful. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, Zippy, no. And fucking... That's yeah. That was the first thing that popped in my head when when you said the wage amount was. I'm like, that's not good money. Um, okay, that's barely. It's it's good, it's, it's good for entry level, I would say. You know? it's, it was better than the min. It's better than the minimum wage here in AZ, which is lo- which is a uh, actually lo- a lot lower than that. Yes, yeah, seven twenty five probably. No, not seven twenty five. It's around. I think around. Um, 10 or 11 uh, i think it's going up to 12 but i think I, if i'm remembering correctly don't quote me on this um it's either 10 or 11 um but i yeah but i i think you and i have some similarities maybe when it comes to you know making sure you know people get you know paid well and stuff like that you know for their work but um i'm not but i i but there's some but i saw someone in the chat say Please guide this wayward soul back into the rightful path. Yes, <laughs> I'm not. I'm so, I'm sorry, my friend, but um, I I was a Christian anarchist uh, when I was in high school, but I n- am no longer. <laughs> um. So you're all about the Jesus, though, right? Um. Yeah, I am a Christian. Okay, that's fine. You've you've been around long enough. You've got to know when I'm an ordained minister. I've been for now 19 years. Um. So like you, you realize Jesus was pretty commie, right? I don't really agree. I think that Jesus Christ was certainly egalitarian, and but I don't agree with this perspective that Jesus was the first communist. Oh, I um, don't. That's a. I don't <laughs> think he was the first by uh, by any means. But I mean, given the positions that he occupied, let's just say that he would be um, communist curious if he were alive today. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that when it comes to what Jesus Christ talked about, which was your love for your fellow man, um, equality, and, you know, just loving your neighbor as thyself. Um, I don't think that that stems into the realm of communism. That's, it's, it's, it's more of a world in which everyone has the, has equal opportunity. Um, Except and, he wasn't and, about opportunity. He was literally giving, right? I know, but yeah, but give, giving, but not, but, but that, Give, giving feeding the uh, masses what, healing uh, the masses feeding, feed, feeding the poor like give like when you have a coat and you see and you have two coats and you see when someone who doesn't have a coat you give one coat to another that's you know that's the christian essence but that's not communism he also was anti-capitalist he was he was he was against a whole bunch of stuff i've told the tale of the the uh the cleansing of the temple there's actually two tellings of the cleansing of the temple between the four gospels um multiple times i've written an essay on the cleansing of the temple tale as well he was very explicitly against a whole host of foundational concepts within the capitalist system and i just have to ask you this question if jesus were alive today how would what would fox news call him I can't, what would Fox News call him? Mm-hmm. I I have no idea. I'm not Fox News. I can I, mean, well, I can only say what I would call him, well, which but, is you know the savior. Uh, I I can't. You're telling because you're, I think, you're telling me. I think what a, you're trying. I think what you're trying to suggest is that what Fox News would do is call him. Oh, you're a communist and you're a socialist and all this a nonsense. Probably terrorist too. While they're at it. <laughs> that's not. That's not. Well, I I can't speak for whatever anyone would say. What would CNN call him? CNN would call him a fraud. You know, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. So, I, so I'm not going to, you know, ma- well, to say that, that what Fox News would say or what CNN would say because they're not me. I can well, only say what come I would on, say. Come on, this is a dude 
who, I mean, well, one, let's face it, curly haired, brown, middle Eastern, right? <laughs> like right out of the gate, fucking got a few strikes against him. Um, but then, um, let's, let's face it. Like this is a motherfucker that came into the temple, started kicking over tables, saying how you've turned our Lord's, uh, my, uh, the father's house and in, house into a den of thieves, specifically referencing the dove sellers forbade them from engaging in commerce, not just in the temple, but around the entirety of the temple, criticized the usury, criticized the loanings multiple times, criticized leadership, talked about how, uh, the, uh, the Lord's, uh, the Lord's palace and temple is the entirety of the earth, which cla claims utter dominion, which nullifies any hierarchical claims of authoritarian leadership the king doesn't mean shit and the give render unto caesar what what is caesar's is about the pharisees and is sarcastic at best because he knew it was an entrapment of his rhetoric going into the comment and so when they tried to hook him up with the currency he's like yeah give it to fucking caesar it doesn't matter it's got his picture on it who cares what matters is the people the lords and the on uh, the tenants that i put forth and those tenants were pretty clear about how Treat thy neighbor as you treat thyself, right? That's not equality of opportunity. That's equality. So you want me to respond? Uh, well, I first I would not refer to Jesus as an an MF. I I don't think that's I that's not how I'm going to refer to him. That's fair. You um, can you can you can I, use I can, what you can adopt whatever rhetorical device you see fit as a Christian. Okay, because uh, because well, yeah, if I were to say that as a Christian, that would be highly inappropriate. Um, but when Jesus Christ cleaned, cleansed out the temple and chased out the money lenders and stuff, you know, he said that my place, my house is supposed to be a place of worship, but you've turned it into a den of thieves. I don't think that then you can make the jump that, oh, well, Jesus is anti-capitalist. I think you make, make the, the jump that this is a house of God. This is not a place where you buy and sell things. This is a place of worship. This is a place where we come together is and it? worship the Lord. This is a place where we lay our sins down at the Father isn't it and ask all the Lord's house, and, though? And, what was that? Isn't it all the Lord's house, though? The temple is certainly the Lord's well, house, just but, like the church is the Lord's house. That's why. Is, doesn't the what, kingdom what, of God lie within? The kingdom of God, yes, does lie within, but <laughs> also, did but did Jesus not go to the synagogue, though? Because Did it have no importance? Of course it had importance. That's why Jesus went to the synagogue and he went to the temple. It's 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 part of the Christian doctrine in the sense to go to the these these places and because they're communal with, gathering points, they're not magic. Jesus was about them because that's where the community gathers, not because the place is sacred. What well, makes just, what makes them I, I, sacred I, I, is the gathering of the Lord's children. Well, I would disagree. I think because you have to remember that the temple was consecrated. And this is a place where in which you put, gave sacrifices uh, unto the Lord. Can you, you know? do, can you do that anywhere? Can you do that anywhere? Well, nowadays, now we don't sacrifice lambs uh, in the temple because no, no. Um, can Jesus you can you the last sacrifice. can you consecrate any ground? C that depends on what doctrine you talk to. Right? Mm -hmm. I I. Uh, that because in the in the Mormon doctrine that has to be done by the church. Well, okay, um, let's let's uh, in, let's let's leave the con artist Joseph Smith out of the conversation. Let's just for for shits and giggles, let's just exclude the Mormons for the moment. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I I was a part of the LDS Church, but okay, <laughs> dude, he was uh, a convicted con artist, and it's a little scammy as shit, especially since the whole prophet hearing from God, black people, nineteen what eighty three eighty seven. We have to leave the Mormon Church out of this conversation for the purposes of consecration talk. All right. Well, I I don't uh, I all right. Well, I, as a for, as a person who was baptized in the church, okay, but uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. From the pro perspective of the Mormons, the the church has to consecrate the ground. So mm -hmm. what we're dealing with is an authority uh, an authority run at that point. Then we'll work within the framework, right? So who is the authority within the church that can consecrate the ground? The priesthood uh, chosen by God. How are, how are they chosen by God? Well, through prayer and revelation by the church leaders, 
Um, that's imp and of course the laying down of hands upon an individual, uh, and through baptism. But it's the it's the it's 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 done through ma mainly so. I ha I, it's done mainly through church revelation and that God that the church members gather together the uh, the leadership you know higher ups um, coming together and then make praying over the individual laying the hand laying hands on the top of the head of the individual while he's kneeled and imparting that uh, that position to that individual um, with others in to you know congregating together and praying so a few people in chat are having problems just with the, the the mormon system of doing things let's just put it that way at the very least uh the uh, there are a few women that have uh, also opinions on how the mormon priesthood operates shall we say but operating within that system um yeah but let, so uh, that but uh, so if you if you guys what if you why? if you disagree with that fine let's we can do it also well, from I, the non-denominational well, perspective i have a, I have I a question real, I, now that you're specifically mormon and also are you still mormon like i know you were um, baptized in the church but do you still ascribe do you still identify as um no i don't i, I identify identify as non-denominational is there a reason that you left the church? Did you leave the church or have you just sort of linguistically left the church? So I, I did not like leave the church in that, like I submitted um, a letter to, you know, yeah. The formal, church the formal you, process. You know, yeah, the formal yeah. route. I'm, I'm just not, um, I, I'm non-practicing if you will. So it's not, it's not where I said, yeah, we were, I wrote you know, here, I'm done with the church. Uh, goodbye. It was more just, you know, I'm, it was more just, I left. Yeah. We would call that a lapsed Catholic if you were Catholic, right? Like you just sort of walk out the front door and don't come back one day. Um, uh, so, yeah, but I, but I, but I, but I am Christian though. I'm non-denominational. Okay. Um, a couple of questions. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do these in reverse order because we're going to personalize them, but, uh, they want to know, did you go on on mission? Um, no, I did not. I converted to the church um, late in life, like in my in my mid twenties, and the, so I was about a member for about like like an active member for about a year, a year and a half. But then I I I left and just uh, went back went to went back to what I grew up was, which was non denominational. Okay, so I want to put a pin in that because I'm going to circle back. So. Apropos of the Jesus and the money, uh, money lenders, it was, they're not money lenders. They were money changers actually, but that ni neither here nor there about semantical ar argumentation. How do you, how do you square the idea that the Mormon church is worth billions of dollars, right? They have stock options. They own businesses. Well, yeah, well, let, me, well let me answer what someone said in the chat, which was, you know, I've been in the church and I know that's not how it works. Like I said, I was only in the church for, a year, year and a half, uh, actively. And so I did not learn everything. That's my basic understanding. Why? Um, I obviously, I obviously don't have, have an under, basic understanding of Mormon doctrine, Why? but I identify now as non-denomination. At what age, so, at what age did you come to the Mormon church? In my mid twenties. Why? I, I mean, I know this is an intensely personal question, but I've talked about getting fisted in a fucking sling on this uh, on this stream. So I'm I'm comfortable sharing of my own personal realm. And if you at any point I ask you a question that you're like, that's way too personal. You can tell me fuck right off. That's too personal. I will not be bothered in the least, but I will pursue lines of question. How does one end up it, it, coming to the Mormon church as a non-denominal non denominational Christian in their like mid twenties and then separate from the church. What was, what was the, the, what was the calling? Well, I suppose it was just the issues I think I had with Mormon theology. I, I had, I, as you investigate, obviously, you know, um, I really believed in it when I joined up. Um, I think what I, I think though I started to have some, criticisms of uh, uh, Joseph Smith himself, though, when I started to research, you know, who he was as a person and who he was as an individual. And there were too many, there were too many questions that I had that I just realized, you know what, I just, 
I do not think that, you know, that what he, that he is who he says he was. And so I just, I think that I need to, he was, uh, he was a, convict, I, he was I a convicted I, I think, fraud, my friend. <laughs> I think I, I said, you know what? I think he, I've been, I've been duped and I, uh, you know, and I, <laughs> and so I need to go. So, but what brought you in the door in the first place? Well, I was going through a pretty hard time in my life. Um, oh, okay. I had, I, I met a couple Mormon people, you know, had them knock on my door and then got introduced to the community and they're all really sweet, wonderful people. Oh yeah. And so, and so I, it was that, you know, you genuinely feel, you know, when you're in this environment, you know, good about yourself and happy and, but you know, the, but that can only last so long. Eventually you have to then, you know, ha do some self introspection and then see really what is at the heart of, you know, the belief system that you ascribe to. And I just, you know, had too many questions about Joe Smith as a person. Okay. So like, I have to point this out because there's no way chat's going to let this slide. And like, I, I, I noticed it as well. Uh, binary, I'll get to it. Cupcake. Yeah. You do know that's how cults work, right? Like they literally got you in a moment of vulnerability. They, they entice you with this kindness. And then soon, once you're on the inside, you start looking around. And if you have that moment of dawning, which you clearly did, you're like, I got questions. How'd I end up here? <laughs> they fucking hooked you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think they're, I'm just, they're, like I said, I'm just, I'm not a part of it anymore. And, uh, but I, that doesn't mean I don't, that doesn't mean I hate, you know, the people that I, you know, used to, you know, go to church with. I mean, they're still you wonderful you people. Don't, still you don't have to them. hate them, but the fact that you had questions about the veracity of their founders is uh, uh, speaks volumes enough. Okay, I'll ask the question. Did you do the soaking? Did So did I get baptized? Yeah. No, no, that's, that's not what they're asking. Um, so the fact that you don't know the soaking reference, I'm not so even... Are they talking about going to the temple? No. <laughs> it's 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 a reference to uh, if I'm following non-binary correctly, and I think I am. Um, I'm going to assume you weren't um, you weren't a virgin when you were baptized, right? I, I what the oh. Uh, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, um, yeah, they're they're pursuing a line of inquiry that is hilarious. I don't, look, I don't, I don't think that question's appropriate. I, fair enough. I'm, I'm not going to discuss my sexual history. Fair, that's just fair enough. Also, we know that's a yes. Um, so <laughs> anyway, it's okay, man. It's okay. We're a bunch of fucking degenerates. It's a, it's okay. Um. But it we, like you know it, we have to we have to respect it like if somebody wants to be approved y'all like they they just as much as we want to be degenerates if he wants to be uh, if he wants to be more conservative in his sex, uh, sexual approach we have to respect that as well it's you know same as don't don't shame, don't kink shame it's the same way the other direction so respect it um so that's interesting. Yeah, it, you the the Mormons hooked you in a moment of vulnerability. I love that you you found your way through. But yeah, the Mormon Church is super capitalistic. Like they 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 turned the Lord's uh, the Lord's house into a fucking just absolute den of thieves. Like right, investing in Wall Street and shit has to qualify. I cannot imagine Jesus would be too pleased if he walked into a Mormon temple. Well, I would. I don't. I I know that when it comes to uh, Christian theology and, and Christ in general, he wants us as individuals, you know, to help our fellow man and to do better. And I I know the church does a lot of good. I mean, because like when I when I needed when I needed help, you know, just with basic gas money, I could go and they would give me gas cards and they would help me out, you know. And but I think that um, I think that the any church in general. Um, that calls itself Christian, you know, should should take the should take what it gets um, and ensure that it's in making sure that um, you know that it's covering its you know overhead, but making sure that you know it's giving it, the rest of it to the community in other ways that it can give, whether that's you know food kitchen or whether that's you know um, helping a member when they're down, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? 
Okay, so fine, fine. And that's something that, and that's something that my dad. That's why my. That's kind of why my dad fell away from the church because he still is um, Christian, non-denominational, unofficially because he goes with my mom to church. But he he kind of got frustrated. But he 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 even though he's really smart religious wise, he he always got frustrated with church institutions because he just kind of felt like you know like you know can I call up my pastor and say hey I have an em- a financial emergency you know. Um, I can't pay rent for this month because I lost my job. Can you help me? He always kind of felt like if that church can off can help, then they should. Um, okay, so non-binary, fine. I will do it. All right. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, um, and I'm telling other members of community who are literally saying they don't know either. They don't know the reference. Soaking is a practice conducted by the, uh, unmarried Mormon couples in which the male inserts his penis into the female's vagina and l- l- lets it just sit there, not moving, because the act of moving is the sexual act itself. They call this soaking. This is a loophole that young unmarried Mormons have been known to practice to engage in some level of sexual activity without actually technically having sex. It's referred to colloquially as soaking there for your all for y'all's edification. Um, you need not respond or answer to it in any way. Um, but there you go. Non-binary addressed happy. Um, but yeah, um, I, I would, I think Jesus might take serious issue with a bunch of stuff that a bunch of the churches do these days. Uh, I think he'd probably start with the Catholic church seeing as they're the big boy on the block and the whole temple made of gold and throne made of gold shit probably would piss him off a whole lot. Um, and you know, the kid fucking a lot of the kid fucking the kid fucking primarily, um, you know, when Jesus said, suffer you little children, that's not what he meant. Um, but, um, you know, yeah, I, I, I also, you have to understand it's like how, like any community with a large amount of like queer people in it, the Mormons are a heavy target, especially due to their, um, <clears throat> belief in conversion therapy, um, which, yeah, hooking, hooking young gay people's genitals up to electrodes and showing them sexually stimulating uh, uh, pictures and then shocking the ever-loving shit out of them with what in essence is a car battery is not exactly a great way to endear yourself in uh, you know upon a community so they may do well, they may have done good for you and for that I'm sure you're thankful and I am as well. I'm glad that they helped you through a tough spot, but they also directly harm many, many people. Well, I, I can't speak for the LDS church since I'm, you know, not in their, you know, organization anymore. Like I said, I, I wouldn't ask I, you to, I, even I'm, if I'm, a I'm a non-denominational Christian. I, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he is the son of God and I believe that salvation comes only through him. Fair enough. That's, 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 that's fair enough. I think, I think Jesus may have a thing to, a thing or two to say about the practice though. Um, you know, yeah. Despite any choices that someone may make, I'm pretty sure Jesus was in the turn the other cheek camp, not the torture them camp. But, you know, maybe my interpretation of Jesus's gospels and uh, Jesus's word is off. Who knows? Um, it's always open to interpretation. Well, no, because well, no, God wants, God says, you know, he said to learn a, to the most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. And the second most important commandment is to love thy neighbor as thyself. And I don't think it differentiates whether your neighbor uh, happens to be uh, gay or bisexual or whatever, you know, it's all care. All God cares about is, uh, you know, all we should care about is that that person is our neighbor and God commands to love our neighbor as ourselves. I, I can, I, I can happily 
get behind that interpretation. The first one's a little needy, but the the second one is I, I can definitely get behind. This is why I can have conversation. We, we got into it fucking, I'm not going to name who the person was, but we got into it a couple of st- streams ago last week, maybe. And they were, you know, fucking abolish all religion. And I'm like, that's fine. If you want to do that, you, you fucking rail against that. But as far as I can you know, see, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I, I really thought that we were going to get at it, but no. you and I seem to be having a, a decent conversation, which is surprising. <laughs> Again, I was telling you, bro, like this is this. Look, I, I know dude, you're a neocon. There's no way I'm going to fucking sit here and talk about, hi, uh, you know, uh, meta ethical analysis of hierarchical power dynamics because you feel about it a distinctly different way. So there's no point. But there's a whole host of other interesting topics that you and I both engage in that I knew would be productive conversation, especially the fact that when I saw that video about, you know, follow Christ or, you know, put Christ first or whatever, I was like, Dude, we're, I'm all over that shit. My community can tell you, I light up every time someone comes into fucking chat and does like a Bible verse at me or something, right? It's like, oh, we're doing this, right? Like it's, I have fun talking about theological topics. I don't believe, I don't think that that's the reality of the situation, but I am agnostic about it. I don't actually know. I'm not an atheist. I'm not going to sit here and say it is one way or the other. I think it's goofy all directions to say it is yes, no, I, I with, to say something with certainty in this regard as to the nature of existence itself to me is a bit much for a, a mere human such as myself. So I, I tend to sit out of that that you know topical conversation. But as far as the the discussion of the theology itself, I think there's valuable stuff in there. And if I can get somebody, I've told this story before, when Las Vegas made feeding homeless people illegal, illegal, all right? When Las Vegas made feeding homeless people illegal, there were two groups at that park that day feeding the homeless people. One, food not bombs, bunch of fucking anarchists, right? Black flags and all. Standing right next to us in solidarity is, and I say the, because as far as I'm concerned, only one representative in the entire valley, the Baptist minister of Las Vegas. She stood side by side with us and looked those cops in the face and said, do what you must. Right? Like it was anarchists and a Baptist minister and some of her congregants standing there in that park that afternoon feeding the homeless in spite of what the state said was legal or illegal because we knew what was right. And what brought her that day to that park was the teachings of Christ. So, as far as I'm concerned, as an anarchist, I can see value in those teachings. Whether I believe them or not, it's another matter. But if it can get somebody to that park and can look somebody in the face that is fully empowered by the state to shoot you in the face dead if they feel it's necessary and say, yeah, whatever, fuck off, I'm doing it anyway, there's value in that teaching as far as I'm concerned. It's just it gets a little hairy when other interpretations and other manifestations come into play. But again, I can see how that can be useful. I can see how it can improve people's lives. I can see how it could improve society. I think there's a lot of downsides as well, but I think that goes that way with all human technology. But that's that's that that's the thing, though. I mean, you you seem to say you admire faith and religion uh, and Christianity, but then you kind of give it a uh, a kind of a, a backhanded slap and say, "Oh, but I think it's kind of stupid." It needs a backhanded slap. It's caused crusades and genocides and child rape. It needs a backhanded slap, right? Like it's not, it's not without, without sin, right? Like it needs that backhanded slap. <laughs> it needs reminded I, I, that I if know, this goes I, I awry. I don't think that, that, but I, I think what you're is doing is that you're taking uh, actions of people who claim to be Christian um, and just saying that that defines Christianity. It doesn't find the, the that does not define Christianity. You know, it's Christianity is not defined by um, bad actors or people who claim to be Christians but aren't. It's defined by the tenets of the faith and by those who are truly practicing it. 
I mean, the tenets of the, f- okay, one, that's a new, tro- new uh, no true Scotsman fa- logical fallacy that you ro- just rolled out there, but chat wasn't going to let it slide, so I had to point it out either way. But two, I think that there's plenty in that book that's pretty fucked up, right? Like the core teachings of Jesus, cool, I'm on board, right? Like you're a non-denominational Christian, you fucking, you focused on the teachings of Christ, I'm on board with that stuff, but it isn't the sole content of that text now is it and there's a lot of stuff in that book that's pretty fucked up well it's the bible is both a script is scripture but it's also it's not just religious teaching it's also a book of history um it's so unfortunately in history there have been things that have happened that have been not so bad but the bible doesn't shy away from that it tells the good and the bad We're- of the experience were they Christian? Well, who was Christian? Well, but so this is this you, is the thing. Got, but what qualifies you, one as a Christian? Isn't aren't all Christians sinners anyway? Right? Like, what does one yeah, what does one do, all, have to do to qualify all, in your eyes to no longer be a all, true we've Christian? All and fallen, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yes. Okay. Well, so. And that's why we need, and that's why we need Jesus, but to walk us of our sins and, and help and help us uh, become better people. The manifestations of that doctrine, as taught by man, have had globe-reaching, like globe-spanning, genocidal consequences. And you attempted to characterize them as not true Christians, but when in fact they're just Christians that have fallen short of the teachings of Christ. Okay, so I th- I think that this thing goes into an argument. I could I could throw the reverse argument at you. Do it. Okay, I could say that. Oh well, look at Stalin. You know, look at all the terrible things that he did. Yes. Oh well, that define. You know, you would say, oh well, you can't define communism. No, I because would. Of what Stalin no, did. I, I absolutely I mean, would. Marx was a centralizing authoritarian, and his um, solutions to his criticisms of capitalism directly led to the likes of Trotsky, Lenin, Stalin, and Mao. Yes, I absolutely would. And I, I should probably should have used that. I should probably should have used that argument against a communist, not an anarchist. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would go. I'll, I'll go then, and I will say this then. Okay, so let's. So since you are an anarchist, I guess I'll have to use an anarchist example then. So if I were to say, oh well, anarchist bombings, you know, um, you know, in the you know the nineteen twenties, mm-hmm. you know. Or, you know, Propaga- during, you know, I'll, I'll help you out. Propaganda of the deed is the, the technical terminology you're looking for on that one. Yeah, if I were to look at if I were to look at anarchist bombings, you know, and anarchist terrorism, which occurred between like, you know, I think 1870s, 1880s to the 1920s. Yes. You know, North America and Europe. Uh-huh. I could then you, I could I could then say the reverse argument. Oh, that defines anarchism. It, but then you would say, oh, well, those actions don't define anarchism. Anarchism is peaceful. No, it, so, no, 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 I wouldn't. I would absolutely say that, in fact, they were intrinsic to the ideals and the mechanisms operating in society at the time, that the, the labor movement would not have made without that carrot and stick approach. Without Mar- without uh, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King could not make the ground he made. The fact of the matter is, is that anarchism today doesn't necessitate that um, that uh, that stick approach that keratin and stick approach the state is a uh, 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 is adequately set up today for um, violence they they expect it and they want it because that is the approach that they are most capable of reacting to but at the time that was the only mechanism by with which the labor movements, anarchists, communists, socialists alike, could make those mechanisms move forward. Just as when the uh, uh, the founders of this country utilized the same sort of terroristic tactics against their uh, their authoritarian government that they were attempting to overthrow, I would not uh, I would not eschew those actions as you're attempting to do. I don't eschew actions that that when it because no no so this, let me repeat the tr- that. So the truth these of the actions are, is- these actions that you try to attest to Christianity as a as a faith because of individuals who claim to be Christian and do something you know awful. I don't. I for example, if you look at you know what the scandals that the Catholic Church has had uh, with you know terrible cases of child abuse. 
I don't then say that that defines every single Catholic or Catholicism. I think that what you had there was institutions that sadly did not follow the actual faith, which was to protect the children. The Bible explicitly talks about this. You know, Jesus Christ, you know, said it so many times in the scriptures, you know, let the children come unto me. You know, he was the most, he, he made it clear that anyone who harms one of my children, you know, better that, you know, um, a rock, you know, like a noose be tied around his neck and with a rock and he'd be thrown, cast into the sea, you know, for what he's done. For So I don't, I, I don't agree that bad actions by individuals define a define the christian faith or define christianity you know i'm just saying, just i'm just saying. like just like just like just like i cannot say that one good person uh it defines the christian faith because no person whether they're good or evil who claims to be christian defines my faith okay the only thing that defines my faith is the author of my faith who is jesus christ who came who was the son of god who came onto earth and um is and is the only way to salvation what just out of curiosity look look I'll I'll pursue that line of inquiry but define salvation for me please what do you perceive your salvation to be i'm just curious as to your own personal faith that's all there's no greater don't look for a gotcha here i literally am just curious what do you perceive to be your salvation so as it says that we've all sinned and we've fallen short of the glory of god and we all have to be saved because we all have sinned and fallen short of God's eternal glory. And so salvation to me represents, um, you know, Jesus who came to earth, who gave himself as a sacrifice unto man to, to be able to be that pure sacrifice, a sinless man, to be able to take upon the sins of the world, to cleanse man of his sins, so that way we could one day go unto and, go unto and live with the, our Father in heaven when we die. Okay. Because because we've all sinned, we've all shown fallen short of the glory of God. We are we cannot be in the presence of God who is totally pure and ultimate. And so Jesus came unto earth and was that said like that sacrifice for man, so that way we could do that. Because before that, you remember how you know they had to sacrifice a pure unspotted lamb, who what whose blood was was shed as the sacrifice to the taking on of our sins. Jesus became that sacrifice, and Jesus saved us from our sins. And so salvation to me represents that, that God is, Jesus is taking the sins of man, putting them upon himself, so that way we can go one day live um, in, this, in the next life with our, our Heavenly Father. Um, oh, hold on. I just want to hear something. Right? Yeah, 70. Yeah, yeah that's, seven. I, always, I always mispronounce that word. Um. So yeah, Jim, hang on, I'm gonna say I, I just uh, w I'm just gonna throw this in there. It's not even like I, you don't even have to respond to it if you don't want to. I I quite frankly am a fan of the um the the cath uh, the Catholic uh the Catholical doctrine of uh, Gethsemane, um, Gethsemane or whatever the fuck, however they Gethsemane. pronounce it. Yeah, um, I love that story. That's great. I love the idea that Jesus got pulled into a garden and shown the entirety of human sin. Um, I think that's hilarious that like every fucking wank that some weeb did to like some cat boy, femme boy, fucking anime hentai porn, Jesus got a picture of, right? Like Jesus was aware of all of the sin of mankind past, present and future so that he could be made aware of what he was sacrificing for. I think that's the, one of the most hilarious stories ever fucking told. Right. Like all things considered, like, you know, it's it's he was exposed to all of man's sins. It's like you do realize what that means. Right. There's some fucky shit we've gotten up to. And Jesus was aware and then fucking hauled his ass up on that cross. Right. Like it's it, it's uh uh Gethsemane. Thank you. Thank you, Gemma, for the for the uh, the the. Uh, Swede! Oh, dear sweet Jesus. Swede is here. Okay, so what you have to understand, RDF, is that Swede was raised in a fundamentalist Christian household and has spent many years arguing with and against Christian fundamentalists 
and religious types and grifters of all sorts. And the fact that Swede is even here for this conversation probably is going to trigger the fuck out of Swede. <laughs> so just, I just wanted to make you aware of some context there. Um, Swede, thank you for the, uh, the sub, by the way. Um, uh, yeah, Jesus was a voyeur. Um, I, you know, look, it, the, the argument at the end of the day for, uh, I, I'm out. Yeah, Swede, <laughs> fucking, yeah, Swede. Like, I'm telling you right now, Swede, you might not want to be there. Um, fucking that or you want to jump in call and fucking do your thing, man. But I, I really, like, RDF has been cool and I don't want to subject him to fucking <laughs> an attack dog of an atheist that you are. Um, but... Yeah, I, I would like to phrase it well, uh, as this, but you don't have to, right? Like the phrasing I would choose is like you have to admit, but you don't, like, right? Like you have to admit, though, that the doctrinal teachings of, of the Bible, as it were, like one, right? Jesus didn't write shit. We know this. Jesus, Jesus didn't write anything. These, these are all stories and scriptures told by other people, not Jesus himself. Um so, like, all of that is open to interpretation at the end of the day, uh, as it were. But those writings, as they are put forth, have been weaponized in some very specific and reproducible manners, right? It's not a one-off this isn't just the Catholics that have the kid fucking issue. The Jehovah's have it. The Amish have it. The Mormons have had it, right? Like it's not just, it's not just, and again, that's a human issue. I will grant you that out of the gate, but there seems to be a concentration of power and issue here. But there's also a whole host of these teachings that are, um, are, are definitely able to be weaponized in a very specific manner to the extent that you can motivate hundreds of thousands of people to traipse across a continent and go slaughter other hundreds of thousands of people and vice versa. And to characterize that as like, well, that's not the, the point or the teachings of Jesus, I agree but the stuff that's the wrapper around the Jesus certainly seems like it can produce those results pretty reliably. Not at all. I mean, you, for, in one hand, you, you know, say that the values that Jesus ascribed to were, you know, uh, admirable and good. And then on another hand, you kind of make fun of him with this since suggestions of what Jesus, you know, according to the Catholic doctrine, when he saw upon the sins of man, I mean, I, I think it's more of like a compliment with a backhanded slap. Again, I am <laughs> openly I, I, doing I, I, that. <laughs> I'm not, that's not, like, I'm not leaning away. I'm not shying away from that. I think that this needs a compliment with a backhanded slap at the very but, least. But, there but, are but, many but, that would say worse, but yeah. But you, but no, I, I think you have a misrepresentation of, like I said, Christianity as a faith and as a religion because you 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 seem to want to highlight individuals who have claimed to be Christian, who have done terrible things in the past. What qualifies and, and that disqualifies you as being Christian? But then you want, but then you look at me and you say, then you want to look, or you want to look at someone who's religious and say, oh well, you're just saying that because that person was a Christian and did good things, that that defines religion. I'm arguing that neither define Christianity. The what the author. And founder of my faith, Jesus Christ, defines my faith. I don't care what a person, I, you know, I, I don't care what a person says when they say, oh, I'm a Christian, and they do a terrible thing. Or a person says, oh, I'm a Christian, and I, they do an absolutely wonderful thing. Those people don't define Christianity. The people who, the, per, the only, there's only one person that defines Christianity, and that is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came on earth as an ultimate sacrifice for man, and gave his life for man, and gave us all, and gave us essentially the blueprint to how to live better and holier and, and wonderful lives. Impasse as far as I'm concerned, but Swede, I know you've got a thought or two. Try and try and try and be chill. About it, right? <sighs> try and be chill. It is. Yeah. It, it's very, it's extremely hard to sit back and give a causal relationship to a specific individual's actions 
to say some abhorrent behavior to and tie it directly to the religious belief without it being some like major cultish issue. Uh, you know, we're talking people's temple. We're talking that type, that level of sheer indoctrination that, that it's, that's very easy to go. They were part of this, like the shunning issue you can tie causally directly. It, that's an abhorrent behavior. We can tie that directly to Jehovah's Witness, or even I believe the Mormons have kind of a shunning uh, thing that they do. Um, with what, say, the um, Christians did ransacking through Turkey and through Aleppo and through that area in just a binge of murderous rage, some of that was may have been religion. The vast majority of it was just fucking greed uh, above all, you know, of, uh, above all else. I mean, a lot of the stories that you hear, it was it was a land grab uh, because, you know, the Byzantine Empire had lost control of the vast majority of the uh, Anatolian Peninsula. And so there was all a lot of it was up for grabs um, and they killed a lot of Christians in their wake. And they also went after a lot of Jews. The anti-Semitism in the Crusades uh, is legendary. Um, so right. when we talk about the fundamentalist side of the, of the Christian faith and, and how we look at it versus, you know, the history of things that happened and how we can say, you know, Christianity is the cause for X, Y, Z. That's very hard to do. Um, I, I get I'm, I'm a little remiss in saying that certain things happened just because now we can say that the People's Crusade, the one that failed miserably, was a religious zealotry. I mean, how else do you explain the Children's Crusade other than religious fervor? Uh, so the, 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 the thing with religion is it creates an environment in which manipulation evil manipulative behavior can flourish because you have the ultimate unprovable carrot stick punishment, you know, trifecta there. If you don't do this, you're going to hell and hell is a ter terrible place to be. Pay no attention to the fact that there's no evidence for any of this, but you know, we're going to throw this in your face. Um, and then for a long time, the church, you know, didn't even have Bibles printed in anything but Latin. And so, you know, how many people could actually read that, you know, as far as the percentage of the population? So priest class. Yeah. You know, and that, and that was the thing that it, at least the Gutenberg press did was it democratized the church. You know, it allowed the, the Bible to be printed en masse in the German language. Um, Martin Luther can be credited for a little bit for this too, um, as as a bad piece of shit that he was of a person, you know, <laughs> legendary anti semite. Uh, but it's you know, I'll also I don't know. Christianity to me is one of those really weird things that morphed from a very polytheistic tradition, you know, came out of the Canaanite polytheistic tradition. Um, existed within that as in, in Yahweh wasn't even the head God within the pantheon of the Canaanite gods and Elyon was, and it's even in the Bible. This is all in the Bible. Um, I believe it's Psalm 82 that it talks about Yahweh going to the council of gods and pleading before Elyon. I mean, doesn't get much more uh, uh, open than that. Uh, that, you know, up until pre-exile, Jewish faith was, was, was polytheistic and it was part of, of the Canaanite tradition. Post-exile, you get into this monotheistic level of, of type of tradition and it, you know, wholesale change. And it's kind of weird. And then you get the very big messianic side, uh, which is where, um, we call him Jesus, but back then they would have called him Joshua. Uh, would have come out of. And Joshua is a very popular name. And we don't even know that the, the you know, we have a pretty good idea that the, that the historical, a historical Jesus existed. Um, beyond that, we have no 
firsthand accounts, nothing. Um, so, you know, that this religious fervor that we feel needs to be tempered with the fact that a lot of Christians don't even understand where their faith comes from and the story of their own religion. Um, the right. new, the, it's the, a much more fascinating story than the church will tell you. <laughs> the, the new international uh, version translation would say the, would call them the great assembly. Um, the new, the new King James would call the congregation of the mighty. Um, but yeah, Psalm, Psalm 82 references a council of God specifically uses the pluralized terminology of gods, the Yahweh, uh, presiding amongst the great assembly and attending it. And Elyon being the, yeah, the head God, um, and Elyon's wife. And I don't remember her name off the top of my head, but, and she was presiding as well. But it, it, it just, it just, I mean, you know, um, somebody had a question. Um, it was Gemma, I think it was for RDF. Um, just, would you accept the, the, the broad critique that Christians of the sort that you defend and identify as true Christians should probably do more to prevent the kinds of harm that are being laid at the feet of the faithful more broadly? Well, I answered that already in the chat, and I said yes. Okay. I, I, I'm not saying that, like, I'm not saying that, well, I, I'm not saying that, you know, Christians should not, should not look at sin and say, and not call it out for what it is. I, I think what the per, I, I think the question that the person suggests was, oh, well, you don't, you're not willing to tell a person who claims that they're a Christian, that no, no, no. they're not living the gospel values. No, that's that's what Jesus did, okay? When Jesus uh, called the, the Pharisees, you brood of snakes, he wasn't doing it as a compliment. He was essentially saying that you are so far off from where my father is and what you're supposed to be. Also, also I did want to point out, as Swede uh, brought up the Gutenberg Bible and the Germanic translation, um, we have the Greek and we have the Greek Bible and we have the Germanic translation of the Bible to thank for us being able to cross-reference the English translation of the Bible with and know that the original term that was forward translated from Greek was arsenokotai. And when you cross, uh, cross translate that same passage in the Germanic Bible, what you find is arsenokotai and the Germanic equivalent both reference pederasty, not homosexuality. Leviticus. Yeah. Pederasty was a major Greek issue uh, if you if you go into Spartan culture, um, the men the Spartan men that made it through uh, had a problem performing for their wives because they were so ingrained in the pederasty tradition that they had to have their um, mentor in the room with them so that they could uh, perform sexually <clears throat> and impregnate their wife. It was um, an issue, so they codified it. Um, and that's, that's that exactly what Paul was talking about. Now, some may, there, there's a pretty good argument that the old Testament against homosexuality is full on homophobic. Um, Hey public, no worries. Hope you're doing well, public. Hope your Friday went well. Hope everything got done. Um, <laughs> Ptolemaic values. Um, <laughs> with a goddamn Spartans. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an. But it wasn't just the Spartans. I mean, the Athenians, but the Spartans were the most famous for this issue that they had. Was and uh, and interestingly enough, Jesus doesn't have much to say about it. Interestingly enough, Jesus doesn't have to say a lot. Uh, ha doesn't have a lot to say about um, most of the issues modern American conservative Christians really rail on about. He did have a lot. To, he did have quite a, a strong statement for slaves in slavery. <clears throat> yeah, that's my biggest critique of Jesus is Jesus dropped the ball on slavery. Yeah, straight up. I don't, th I, I, I don't think so, because when Jesus says, love thy neighbor as thyself, 
if you truly love your neighbor as yourself, you won't put your you won't enslave your neighbor. Quote him, quote him, Swede. Uh, well, there's Leviticus twenty five forty four where God expressly tells you to go buy your slaves from the nations around you. There's the numbers. Wait, uh, wait, the wait. Bible there's a bunch verse, which tells you that as long as your slave doesn't die after you beat the ever living shit out of him, you're you're good. You know, I w- when you say love thy neighbor, neighbor. Uh, originally had a much different connotation than when the Greek translation uh, of the story of Jesus <clears throat> kind of changed it. Luke, Luke meant fellow Hebrew. Luke twelve forty seven to forty eight beat slaves who did uh, who did wrong with many stripes, unless they knew not their wrong with few stripes. Yeah, and the, the numbers Jesus. one is even more damning because it's it's written as far as a direct commandment from God, as far as saying, this is the word of God saying, you know, it's a quotation from Yahweh himself in that, you know, as long as within the next 48 hours after you beat your slave, the slave doesn't die, you're all good. It's, this is where Jesus, like, look, I'm, I'm on board, yeah. but Jesus dropped the ball on slavery. Well, let me answer, if I can, the the whole th- thing in the Old Testament, okay, about slavery, okay. Um, though that that's if I if I if I understand correctly, uh, was the law of Moses, and I'm not, and yes, we Moses was a prophet of God, not going to deny that, but to say that what everything that Moses uttered. Um, was what God wanted. I don't agree with that because <laughs> even Moses got it wrong at times, and Moses at time and Moses was not allowed into the promised land uh, because remember, you know, he had did not obey God. You know, remember he was told uh, at the rock, you know, n- to just command the rock to pour water and not to strike it. And and it wasn't just that. There were other issues about Moses when God said to Moses that I want you to go back to Egypt. And be my voice. And he said, no, I, I'm not a good speaker. Get someone else. And he, God said, no. And he said, no, I can't do it. And he said, okay, fine. I will get Aaron to help you. But you have the thing is about is, is that you're saying that every single word that came out of Moses' mouth or everything that he commanded people to do uh, was of God. I don't, I don't agree That's with that. That's the thing is uh, that this isn't a quote of Moses saying something. The, the, the Leviticus and... Um, S and numbers passages are expressively saying God said this. And if you're trying to tell me that, that this is Moses saying God said this and it's an error or it's intentionally misleading, that throws into doubt the entire biblical tradition. And no, I'm saying I'm saying that Moses that Moses, not God said that. I'm saying that Moses said, hey, this I'm God's representative. And this is what God wants you to do. But that's most not the way it reads within the Bible, though. It says God, you know, especially in Exodus, when it goes gets into the slave tradition, uh, that God because, says because, this. Because look at it this way. So um, Moses did not grow up, um, among, you know, in in slavery. OK, he was a part of the Egyptian aristocracy. You know, he was part of that society. And Egypt, yes, at the time was had a lot of slaves, and it was a slave system. So, unfortunately, with Moses, he did not he he took those uh, attitudes, unfortunately, with him. So and, you're saying God couldn't tell Moses that slavery was bad and that is so effeminate that couldn't command the, the society to live without slaves? No, because if do you remember, was Moses allowed to go? To the promised land? No, he was denied that prom. He was denied that, and but I not think because of slavery. And I and I no, I think that that was one. No, I I believe that that was probably one of the issues that God had with Moses because Moses would had a history of of not listening to God and you know instead trying to do his own thing. So where did they recant this whole thing in the later traditions um, after Moses died? Well, if you, if you ever hear slavery discussed um, in the Bible post 
um, you know, the p people of Israel coming back, you know, do you ever hear slavery discussed um, when it comes to David or to King Saul Luke. or to Malachi? They had slaves. Luke. They were slave owners. Luke. Luke, Luke specifically <laughs> talks about yeah. this. I literally quoted it. Luke talks about what Jesus said to do with your slave and how to beat them. And then Jesus himself is quoted as saying, be obedient to your masters, no matter how cruel they are. I don't know. Well, I don't know the verse you're referring to. I'd have to look it up and get the context. Um, I do know that people discuss slavery, but I'm not aware of Jesus discussing slavery. Luke, and Luke are, chapter 12, verses that, 47 and I would 48. Also that the point earlier that you swear you said that, you know, well, neighbor didn't, you know, didn't, doesn't really mean, you know, where Jesus said, you know, love your neighbor. You said, oh, well, neighbor means something else. You know, when Jesus was asked, who is my neighbor? He didn't say, oh, well, a Jew stopped for a Jew and the fellow Jew helped out his fellow Jew. He said, I addressed that. A Samaritan who many Jews at, them, uh, Jews at that time did not like and did not get along with was the one who he referenced. And he said, if this is to be that person, you know, he was using a person that people of that society hated as an example for a more a good moral person i i specifically address that because jesus changed the definition of neighbor as it was expressly in the tradition of the of this 600 and what was it 618 commandments something along those lines yeah well i mean because there's two there's two sets of 10 commandments yeah there's exodus 20 and exodus 34 um, and my favorite is is the tenth commandment of the second set, which is do not boil a baby goat in its mother's milk. Yeah, and I mean OpenGL historically it doesn't hold up. I know um, the fucking the ancient Israelites weren't enslaved uh, in any appreciable numbers in Egypt. Like right, like this no. is no the the, uh, the 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 first five books of the Bible were written during the exile, as best we can tell. Yeah. Like, but yes, yeah, sla ser servants and slaves being beaten and serving their masters are referenced in the New Testament in multiple passages uh, under the guise of Jesus speaking on them. Um, also, uh, somebody said something and it's, it's already slipped me. I'm sorry. Somebody prompted me with, oh, uh, Wither. Um, hell of a fucking article. I don't think I can talk about that on air with her, but thanks for sending that to me. That was a hell of a thing. Um, Bit of Bible trivia. What is the oldest book that we have record of, of the Bible? Don't know. Anybody? Anybody? I'm giving chat a little uh, bit well, of a chance. They're on a six second delay plus. So give them, <laughs> a, a, give them a little bit. Um, and oh yeah, 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 um, oh, OpenGL. That's what I was gonna fucking talk about. OpenGL. I just talked about this the other day. You're talking about. Uh, he said, and just on what Jesus said, not what he said in his Sky Daddy form. Um, he was also big on people paying taxes. Honestly, I have always read uh, Matthew 22 sarcastically. I'm not kidding you. It seems smarmy. Um, Book of Enoch says square. Uh, actually, Marcus is correct. It's the book of Job. Okay, cool. Mark, uh, yep, there's Marcus with Job. Um, uh, Hermetica Trismegistus, yes, the Hermes, the, the, the Hermetic Corpus. Um, that's my turf, too. Um, I, open. Um, I've always read Mar uh, Matthew 22 sarcastically. Uh, I'm not kidding you. Like, I legitimately think Jesus was being smarmy in that passage. Right. And then uh, and then went the, uh, the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they set out uh, 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 unto him their disciples with the Herodians saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man that for thou regardest not the person of man. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus, but Jesus, but Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, "Why tempt ye? Uh, why tempt ye me, hip, uh, me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money." And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, "Who is this image and superscription?" They say unto him, "Caesar's." And then saith he unto them, "Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God." 
Okay, so Jesus literally said, show me the thing that matters to you. And they pulled out a piece of fucking random metal with a dude's face stamped on it. Right? And he's like, yeah, this shit doesn't matter. Right? At the end of the day, we know currency is a, is a social construct. It's a fabrication. It's not an inherent concept. It's not a natural law. It's just a fucking goofy thing we made up. And you're talking to this dude about, like, you know, who hangs the wep, a weft and warp and, uh, of the, 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 the cosmos, right? What, what actually makes existence and creation function? And you, you're coming at him with a fucking, like, random piece of metal with some dude's face stamped on it? He's like, yeah, fucking give it to him. It doesn't matter. Right? Like, that's, that's how I've always read that, that passage is like, yeah, whatever. Render unto Caesar what's his because whatever is Caesar's isn't actually important. It's, the, it's a social construct. It's the domain of man, right, rather than that of the father. It's literally a social construct, and it's yours to do with what you will. That's what they taught us how to read it in seminary. Yeah, like it, it's 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 literally Jesus being a smarmy asshole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the the whole uh, the whole eye of the needle thing. It's it was him trying to get him to laugh and make a joke and uh, have some humor to it. Um, yeah, it, it's, so, it's, yeah, it's, it's 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 an interesting thing. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, these were written what forty years after the fact and. In some instances, off later of each other. Um, the other part was is if you go by the chronological order of what we suppose they're written, Jesus gets more and more supernaturally powerful as you go, until you get to uh, John, where he's super Jesus. Super Jesus. I mean, I'd watch that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying I'd watch it. Book of John, man. He he turns into a supernatural nightmare for enemies. Um, but it's it's. The, the Christian tradition for me always has the major problem is, is that it has such a big disconnect with its Jewish roots. You know, its original Jewish roots, there is no hell. There really isn't a big emphasis on the afterlife. There really isn't, quote unquote, a heaven. There really isn't a lot of these things that the Christian tradition imparts. And the reason is, is because the Romans and the Greeks started to influence Judaism uh, and created this need for an afterlife for them to whip this up so that they could get converts. Um, you know, when they talk about hell, they talk about the, the, the garbage pit outside of Jerusalem, that that's where you'll be disposed of. Well, that's where they threw people that were just giant piles of human garbage uh, for their quote unquote burial uh, for people they didn't like. Um, um, it was just a giant pit. Crystal, Crystal, um, it's Luke 12 of 47, 48. Um, New International will probably translate it to servant, which is a generous translation, let's just say. Um, and OpenGL, you saw me, um, you saw me, look, that was me gesturing to you, like, eh, you know, and fucking at the end of the day, right? It is what it is. Um, <clears throat> but God, I'm still, I'm still fucking with her. Thank well, you. Yeah. I mean, Jesus did say, uh, I'll be back before the last of you passes away. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, right. Well, timeline's a little off, but it is what it is. Um, I didn't seek champion 2000 years running. <sighs> Look, if you told me that Mr. Rogers was Jesus reincarnate and he just like checked out, he was like, yeah, you're not ready for me. I'd buy it. Mr. Rogers was fucking solid, and by all accounts, he was practicing his faith. Um, he was a Christian. He he did he did minister in a very real way, just not overtly. And I have mad respect for that. So, and he put his feet in a pool with a black man on TV mm -hmm. to show our racist society that. You ain't going to catch nothing. <laughs> right? Like, I, I, you know, like, by all accounts, if, if you wanted a modern Christian, like, if you wanted a modern Jesus analog, I'd say fucking Mr. Rogers is a solid pick. Yeah. Right? Like, he's, he, he cared about the children. He cared about society. He cared about equality and loving thy neighbor. He literally used the, like, you know, won't, he used the exact same rhetoric. That motherfucker was a Christian minister on TV. And nobody even noticed, right? Like talk about walking the walk, 
right? If anybody's going to minister to America, I'm all for Mr. Rogers, right? Like f- uh, Copeland and his ilk can end up where they need to end up, right? But Mr. Rogers was the 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 epitome of a good Christian. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, my 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 one of my favorite lines of a movie is the one is the uh, the docudrama of Mr. Rogers' life with Tom Hanks, I believe. Yeah, um, but it's but it's the wife of the reporter looking at him and going. Don't ruin Mr. Rogers for me. Uh, Cupcake. Yes. He was pro-LGBTQ. He intentionally hired gay people to work on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. They were openly gay. He had two members of his uh, of his cast uh, of his crew that were openly gay and the net, like the the hiring team did not want involved on a children's program. And he insisted. And the black person was the mailman who, yep. on a hot day on the TV set, that invited is, him to take his shoes off and cool he was gay. off in the pool. Yeah, the the black dude everybody always talks about, the that Swedes talk about, that everybody remember remember that guy. He was one of the gay men. The two gay people who worked on his show that Mister Rogers by hand made sure worked on his show were two of his closest friends. Yes, he was he was explicitly pro LGBTQ as well as anti racist as well as as well as Mr. Rogers was fucking based as shit, yo. That's why most at least once a month on Twitter I go, you know, I post, uh, hey, make Mr. Rogers proud of who you are today. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's it's quite the statement. Skept, skeptic, trans wasn't an issue of the day for Mister Rogers, but I guarantee goddamn to you, he would have been pro-trans. He, he, yeah, was, he would have probably wanted to set up counseling to make sure kids got the mental help they needed. Like that's um, in that society, right? Like he 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 was. He walked the walk, like, right? Like, every question that you try and, like, pick apart at who Mr. Rogers was, the dude walked the walk. He literally did the Jesus thing. And in by all accounts, he was ministering, by the way. He just did it covertly. He was actually teaching the teachings of, like, the best version of Jesus in his mind. Love thy neighbor as thy love thyself. Black, gay, woman, child, it doesn't matter. Show them love, show them compassion, and help them. That was what Mr. Rogers did. And yeah, he never explicitly had to deal with uh, trans issues because trans issues weren't an issue that came up during his time. But you know what did? Racism did, and we know where he landed. Homosexuality did. And we know where he landed. There's no question where he landed, too. That's the thing is there's no ambiguity. Where yeah, he landed. like he explicitly did these things. It wasn't like, oh, well, I, on the down low, quietly, Mr. Rogers supported behind the scenes. This motherfucker came out and was like, you hire them. I don't care if they're gay. I don't care if they're black. And in fact, the gay black man's going to play a fucking mailman officer on my show. And I'm going to wash his feet. I'm going to put feet in the same pool with him. And I'm going to wash his feet like straight up Jesus style up in here. Right? Like he was overt in his support, whether you noticed it or not at the time, behind the scenes, it was explicit. Yes. I'm sorry, guys. Look, um, I, I would love to stay on uh, and obviously get involved with more with the chat, but my friends are having a chat, and so I'm going to bounce because they no. asked me to come on. So no, by I will all see means. you, you later. Have, you, um, you were a very good sport about it all, all, especially all things considered. And RDF, if you ever want to talk theater or anything like that, I love a good bit of voice acting too. So like, we don't have to do it on the air. Well, definitely thank you. I do appreciate you having me on. I know we have some um, disagreements and those aren't going to change, but um, for you guys, even, you know, uh, even though... You're not a fan. I wish you all the best. I wish your audience all the best. God bless you all. 
And hopefully I'll be on again and, uh, you know, discuss in the future. Yeah. Take care of yourself, RDF. Have fun. Um, <clears throat> Mr. That Rod. Was the first thing I let go of when my angry atheist days was uh, when people said that they would pray for me. As oh. long as it wasn't like, a, well, you could be doing something actually, you know, active and, and helpful. Uh, was to, to just start saying thanks and yeah, be like, well, at least they're thinking of me. Yeah, exactly. If you're sending me positive thoughts and you're not sitting there molding at me and shit like that, I don't care, man. Like, you know, fucking do what you got to do. And it fucking, it's no skin off my back, right? And if shit does work that way, it's a good thing. So who cares? All right. Um, and yeah, public. Uh, um, Mr. Rogers equals Jesus 2.0 got out all the bugs. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, if you wanted to argue with me that Jesus came back to Earth and was in fact already reincarnated, I would put forward Mister Rogers as the the possible, as the possibility for that, right? Like legitimately, I, I, the, the guy was good. He was like legitimately good. Right. How many, how few of us are legitimately good people? Right. Like we're all fucked up in some way. Mr. Rogers, by all accounts, is fucking a good person. Right. Like a model to live your life by sort of situation. We get one of those like every thousand years, (laughs) y'all. Like it's not a common occurrence. So the fact that we got to document that shit on TV, it's take it for what it's worth. Those those radiation waves are out in space, y'all. Yeah, like it's legitimate. Like that's, dude, take it, take it for what it's worth. I have a serious transgender question. Is mainly theory that it's some type of biological anomaly or does it serve an evolutionary purpose, Wagonator? Um, there, there's two or three studies that begin to explore what is going on within the trans thing. And I will have to go find them. And I, I don't pretend to know exactly what they're trying to say. Um, but there is some work in that area. Uh, I don't believe that it's a, um, evolutionary thing. I believe it's something else that they're that they um but at the end of the day those i think every study that we have now uh basically says we need more studies so nothing is yeah nothing's written in stone at this point for sure um skeptic mother Teresa can burn in hell (laughs) uh some people would like to say mother Teresa would treatment to people yeah she was an evil evil i almost went twat twat and cunt simultaneously like quat like you know yeah she was an evil fucking cunt like she's in that like margaret thatcher territory of hell right like there there's there's a special place in hell reserved for that evil fucking bitch fuck her yeah she believed the suffering brought you closer to god and christ so she denied treatment to people who were suffering in her so-called clinics and hospitals meanwhile when that bitch got sick Oh, yes. She pulled in Ayn Rand real quick. Yeah, she was a sadist. Um, let's see. Twunt. <laughs> Quat. Twunt. I think Jesus actually came back in 1992, went to Lollapalooza, said, this is better than heaven, and said, peace out, y'all. You guys have already had it. Nice. Um, he he saw Soundgarden and Pearl Jam on the same stage. Said, "That's it. I'm done." You tell how old you are. Um, <laughs> fucking a. Um, <laughs> Jeremy's broken. No, what? I'm sorry. What? Um, <laughs> dude, I was dude. I think I was middle school or something when that came out. Maybe, maybe no. Like I was twelve, so I was in the sixth grade. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So I was in elementary. Yeah, for sure. Like, cause I'm younger than you by a, by a bit. So yeah, I was in elementary. But dude, that shit was on repeat. Like my Soundgarden and Pearl Jam did play Lollapalooza Seattle '92. I know because I have friends yep. that went there. But Je- Gemma, Gemma, the question is, 
specifically, we know there's a biological basis. What we're, what the question was, was essentially, does it serve an evolutionary purpose? And if so, what is that purpose? Right? Like, I'm not aware. If you've got studies on this, I want to fucking see them. But I, I'm not aware of any studies on this matter. But, what was the big thing that had multiple? Oh, yeah. Soundgarden, Ugly Truth, Lollapalooza 92, Pearl Jam. Yeah, they played it, Lollapalooza. It was like 40 bands. You oh. can't say that they didn't play. No, Skeptic, yeah. Uh, Gandhi was a <clears throat> interesting person to say as well. Um, so, you know, yeah. Um, oh, and we still haven't picked out what the fuck we're doing for Bad Movie Night, by the way. Um, like Story, I didn't say not a biological basis. I said not a evolutionary basis. Um. All right, so, all right, that, that, uh, that, let's see, cool, all right, do we noted, do we noted, do we noted, um, dude, I fucking, I still can't, dude, I love, I can't fucking talk about it, did you put this shit in shared content, um, with her, no, of course you didn't, fucking, it's okay, I got it, um, I'll, I'll put the link in chat, um, uh, not in chat. Sorry, it's not going in chat. It's going on the Discord server. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not. It's not Twitch friendly. Um, yeah, but again, this isn't like I said. Yeah, ultraviolet. Okay, cupcake. I saw you post that that you were suggesting ultraviolet. We've got where's media? There we go. Go to media. Um, <laughs> I love uh, fucking that. All right, BMN. Um, Caboose suggested Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Um, but hang on, we've got we've got an archived list. Where's where's the thread? Movies we want to watch. Unarchive it. Um, we did we did this. I'm gonna check box. Um, all right, so we did that one. Um. Let's see. Oh, and Cassidy put them all in one post. We're going to have to iterate these out singularly. That way we can check mark them as we go through. Um, Aka suggested Battleship. All right, so tell you what. Um, I don't know if Ultraviolet qualifies for so bad it's good. It, it, it's it's bad. Like, I remember watching that movie. It's 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 not great. Um, I don't know if it's it's bad enough to be so bad it's good. Um, let's see. We did dis we did Atlantic Rim. Yep. Um, is that in the list as well? Oh yeah, you iterated them out. All right, cool, Caboose. Thank you. Um, check that one as well. Um, Carpe, thank you for the sub. Um, dude, we did a bunch of fucking theory tonight. We did some philosophy. We did some relationship advice. We did, and then we did a bunch of theology and nobody got fucking angry and fucking molded and lit up. Like, right? Like we actually had legitimately productive conversation and nobody fucking lost their shit. Nobody had to be banned or timed out or TOS'd out of here. This is, oh, wow, that was fucking weird as shit, y'all. I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> Tech support, thank you for the biddies. Um, there, there's a good joke in there for you on shared content. Um, okay, what do we got? Mm. Somebody invokes Smith without knowing what Smith talked about. <sighs> Tech support, gift <laughs> sub, thank you, and congratulations on Gemma. Uh, so this dummy said, that has nothing to do with capitalism. It's merely the byproduct of our laws, which are heavily <laughs> lobbied by these corporations. Adam Smith didn't have an opinion on corporate liability Sh shift. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he wrote about it in the Wealth of Nations. <laughs> okay, sure. You know what? Yeah, why not? Oh, by the way, um, 
Bob Black, thank you for the biddies. Doing a capitalism, apparently. Yeah, we're doing a capitalism. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, I didn't get an opportunity to do it tonight. Um, how far are we? 942. I'm not doing it tonight. We'll restart on Monday. Um, I've been doing a reading from the Anarchist FAQ on uh, why ANCAPs are not anarchists. Um, and it's a long document. It's going to be hours worth of reading and I've been recording it into segments. It's going into a playlist on the YouTube channel. So we will have it in the future. Um, but you're going to love this, um, Swede, um, this comment, uh, the, 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 these, the, these fuckers have started commenting on the, ch uh, on the, uh, uh, on the, uh, videos already. And one of the comments I absolutely adore. Still, I still love it. I literally have a paper proving ANCAPs are anarchists. No, no paper attached, no link, no citation, no article title, no journal number, no JSTOR ID, nothing. Just nothing. Just, just, I literally have a paper proving ANCAPs are anarchists. And that's the end of that. Also, Really, which, which video was that on? Uh, that was on how libertarian is right libertarian theory, and the long and short answer of it is not very libertarian. So, um, Puka, thank you for the biddies. Um, it'd be number one point two. There's been two comments on there so far. Another one quoting Rothbard: "If the individual cannot use a theory of justice as an armor against state oppression, then he has no solid base to, from which to roll back and defeat it." Hey, Danny. Thank you for the biddies. I have a thing that says five comments, but only four show up. Yeah, there's probably fucking dude. They're probably already getting pulled. They get angry. They get angry. Um. <laughs> um. Yeah, because if you guys haven't been like, dude, there, this this paper is this this document is so well sourced and cited and quoted, and it's it's made by multiple people, and so it goes through Rothbard and Mises and Hayek and fucking Locke and fucking Hoppe. Right. Like it goes through their bullshit and like it really in that section talking about right libertarianism. And of course, it, t it talks heavily about Rothbard, of course, being the foundation for a lot of this bullshit um, and how like Rothbard literally argued you cannot use reality or experience to uh, uh, to um, um, uh, to go against or co uh, contradict or criticize theory. And it's it literally you go through it and you're like, that is literally the opposite of the scientific method. You are not allowed to use experimental data collected to revise or contradict or uh, address your underlying hypothesis. You have to only use theory to criticize theory. And it's like, how the fuck does this even work? As wait, 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 wait. That then, then, then they don't even understand what theory means. Theory is a body of knowledge, uh, body of observations, body of data that you use to make predictive power. It's Rothbard, man. Of course he doesn't. It's like all a priori reasoning and shit like that. Peaky Blinder. Oh Peaky Blinder. Thank you for the 200, uh, 200 biddies. Holy shit. Hey, Danny, thank you for the fucking gift sub to tech support. Paying that, uh, uh, hooking tech support up. And Zippy with the gift sub to Wilhelm. Thank you kindly. Apparently we are doing a capitalism. Thank you all. Thank you kindly. Um, yeah, no, it's insane, dude. Like going through some of these quotations from um, fr uh, from Rothbard are batshit insane. Like you're just like, uh, excuse me, isn't this how? It, like, huh? H how does that work? Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting thing. Um, so yeah, we, we've been going through this document piece by piece by piece, and eventually we will have a playlist of. 11 chapters with like four to eight fucking subsections per uh, per chapter um, compiled into a YouTube playlist of me reading this document so you can learn it for yourself or you can share it with other people of all of the reasons why ANCAPs are not actually anarchists, why right libertarians are acting in bad, bad faith, and why the entirety of their system of thinking is completely illogical and ass backwards. Um, so yeah, I'm putting that fucking down so y'all have it. Aka, good night. Thanks for hanging out. Um, hey, Danny, thanks for another hundred biddies. And Crystal with a resub. Thank you kindly, Crystal. 
Um, yes, it, it is a fucking, it's a thing. Um, I looked up a little of that Hoppa fucker and oh my God, fuck him, says Buddhist. Um, yes, it, it's, it, it, man, it's, it's rough. There's, there's only one Austrian school person you should ever pay attention to. And that's Joseph Shum, Schumpeter. Schumpeter. Um, yeah, the Austrians are wacky. Um, we go through that. Trump like Peter is, uh, is is your ace in the hole when you go. You know, uh, there was a socialist in the uh, Austrian school. Um, let's see. Um, hey, let's see. Um, let me let me try and find it. Um, okay, so. Uh, okay, so here you go. Here's uh, here's von, uh, here's uh, here's um, von Mises on it as well. Um, no kind of experience can ever force us to discard or modify a priori theorems. They are logically prior to it and cannot be pro either proved by corroborative experience or disproved by experience to the contrary. That is the most batshit stupid thing I've ever heard. There you go. Like this is foundational uh, philosophy for ANCAPs and right libertarians. It doesn't matter what the fuck you happens to you or the entirety of the globe. It cannot disprove my theory. Especially if you, you know, put proper controls in and gather data in a sense that may, you know, and have empirical observations that are contrary to my a priori, ups, you know, thesis. Well, fuck you and your, and your evidence. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Buddhist, Buddhist, thank you for the extra hundred biddies, hundred biddies for the, for a drunk Buddhist. I think I chugged a little too much Bacardi. Oh, slow down Buddhist and fucking get some water in you, my friend. You um, know what this, you know what this is that that is that's, that's presuppositional apologetics. <laughs> it's, oh dude, we get into it. Yeah. Uh, Katsuyan fucking criticizes the fuck out of it for a, a while. And yeah, there's, there's a whole, like I said, it's, it is really fu it's a really well put together document um and so like here's here's rothbard on uh on mises right uh mises indeed held not only that economic theory does not need to be tested by historical fact but also that it cannot be so tested he said this in praxeology the methodology of austrian economics page 32 hayek wrote that economic theories can never be verified or falsified by reference to facts all that we can and must verify is the presence of our assumptions in that particular case what the fuck are we even doing? They literally like the foundations of right libertarianism and Kapistan bullshit and all of this Rothbard, Hayek, Hoppe, von, von Mises bullshit is literally rested on a foundation of direct opposition to the scientific method. They're, they're, the, they're the economic and political science equivalent of fucking crystal sellers at the at the like flea market They're like in my world and i and this may be crazy but my whole thing with like economic models and everything is is they're worthless unless they have true predictive power yeah well that data means nothing um public thank you for the uh for the gift sub to beasticle um, it, it is, yeah, like, yeah, apparently we are doing the capitalism and thank you all those kindly again, who, who, um, who have donated and given and, oh, by the way, there's a tip function now. Cause somebody actually asked for the like coffee, Kofi, I don't, I think it's pronounced coffee. Um, the uh, fucking thing. So I set it l up live on stream for one person in particular. So if you want to bypass the whole Amazon Jeff Bezos thing, exclamation tip will take you to that page and you can do it and it dumps directly into paypal like instantly like the the moment you do that over there it dumps into paypal i was actually surprised i got the notification i was like what the fuck it's it's pretty quick um so if you want to just bypass all that y'all can um so hmm it was Ray. Yeah, it was Ray Anarchy that fucking got me to do it. Um, if you've never heard of Saiten Brigincate um, and you want to, if you want to hear like the religious side of Hayek's arguments and, and that, uh, he's a presuppositional apolog apologist who says you can't make a moral judgment unless you have an, an objective moral truth backing you up. Um, 
And um, Buddhist, not Buddhist, sorry. Um, Lulata, I respond to fucking, geez, these people are insane, aren't they? Buddhist, uh, again, not Buddhist, Lulata. Um, I responded to you in chat. It's H A Y. Uh, uh, it's uh, H A Y E K. Hayek. Um. Ah. Okay. Buddhist. Th well. Thank you. Put, you didn't me. even read Hayek in uh, master's level courses. Of course not. You didn't read him in undergrad either. It's fucking garbage. Why do you? Why would you fucking read garbage when you're trying to figure out an actual thing, right? <laughs> the most right-leaning person we would read would be. Can you take a guess? Uh, no, I can't actually, because fucking econ classes, man. That's a thing I avoided. Friedman. Uh, that may. Oh, Jesus Christ, that makes sense. But holy crap, um, it, Buddhist was there with Milton Friedman. Um. Thank you kindly again. We apparently did a level two capitalism, everybody. Um, so I guess I'm supposed to tell you try harder next time because we're supposed to be gamifying this. Like that's the whole point is that we didn't get to level five. So why did you all fail Daddy Bezos, right? Daddy Bezos is sad and disappointed in all of you um, because apparently that that's, 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 that's how that's supposed to make us feel, right? Fucking yeah, we got to do better next time for Daddy Bezos. Um, fucking fucking a. Um, am I familiar with Revolutionary Left Radio? No. So there you go. Um, <laughs> viva exclamation shame. Um, yes, shame, shame on us all, shame on us all. Um, I supported the Apple Corporation by getting a new app, uh, i thirteen iPhone 13. Jesus Christ, man. Um, I, I, I managed to make my fucking iPhone seven plus last another probably year or two, um, by like cutting a deal. Cause I used to be a sprint customer and then they got bought by T-Mobile. Um, and fucking, I called T-Mobile because they sent me a message saying that like, uh, your device isn't going to work on our network next year. Uh, Cause we're, we're down, like we're getting rid of all of the 3g stuff. And like, you know, I was like, what the fuck, man? I got 4g LTE on this phone. What's the deal? And the guy was like, well, you need to upgrade to a new phone. So, uh, so it can work with our network. I'm like, yeah, that's bullshit. Like, what's the deal? And, and finally I got this guy talking, I got transferred a couple of times and I got this guy fucking talking that I ended up on the phone with. And he's like, you know what I actually can do? I can send you a SIM kit for free. that will just connect you to our network and you'll be fine. I'm like, you can do that. I'm like, you're not going to get in trouble. He's like, no, it's fine. Like we offer them to some of our customers as of like a retention plan. I'm like, well, fucking send me the kit, man. So, you know, I was like, he, he send it. He fucking kicked it out. I was here in like two days, switch over. You're over on the T-Mobile network rather than the Sprint network. I'm like, so we're, I'm good for like a while. He said, until we run, until we decide to get rid of 4G connections entirely, he said, your phone will be fine. I'm like, bam, done. Fuck the corporations. I ain't buying shit until this phone stops working. And I, I, I'll just go get the battery replaced or the screen replaced. I like the, the thumbprint uh, login as well. I'm still rocking an iPhone 6 Plus. Yeah, good on you, Open. Like, if it still works, it works. Go fuck yourself. I'm not buying a new one. Yeah, I had a 10, and um, I have to keep current with the ecosphere at work. So, I, I get that. I feel that. Um, hey, Danny, my service has been such trash since the merger. Mine hasn't been. I haven't noticed a bit. Like, I just haven't noticed. But I'm in Vegas, right? They, they are. We've got cell coverage. Um Hope you gave him a good review. Dude, Peaky, I fucking, I asked him, I'm like, you got a link? Like, send me a fucking, like, what, what's your, yeah, don't worry. He got a fucking sparkling review. And I didn't mention the, the hookup either. Like, I know how that shit works, right? Like, I didn't mention any of that. Like, just best, best guide, recommend your company because of him alone. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, straight up. Um, sailing Ocelot never had an iPhone before. I've had all sorts of phones. I actually didn't have Apple devices. I had Android first and then I had the pre cell phones before that, all, all of that. Um, but I got a tablet years ago. I got an iPad. My stepfather is a, is just a dummy. He's just a dummy fucking. He walked into a sprint store and they saw him coming miles away. He walked out of there with two new cell phones and two new tablets because reasons, 
right? Because they saw him coming miles away. They knew a sucker when they saw one. Um, and it was a Samsung Galaxy Tab and an iPad Mini. And he gave the iPad Mini to my mom. And my mom was like, I don't fucking want this. Like, I don't know anything about this. I don't want anything to do with this. She's like, here, do you want it? And so she handed me off, handed off to me one time when I was over there. I was like, you know what? I'll take it. I'll play around with it, right? I'm in tech. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a look. And I started using it. And you know what? I liked it. I liked it. And I, I, I was like, you know what? I can see a, a, a reason for this existing in my life. Like, I can see a niche for this. And I eventually gave it back to her and upgraded to a full-size tablet, a full-size iPad. And I, I you know, I was like, oh, you know, I, I, I like it, but I, I didn't... I, I knew there was something lacking. So I forget which iteration of it, but I mean, I have an iPad Pro, like the 12 inch fucking iPad Pro. And with the, with the pen and everything, and I got to tell you, it actually does affect my workflow. It really does affect my workflow in a positive way, right? Like I've done things on the, because of the iPad that I never thought I'd do, right? Like graphic design and art and drawing and stuff. I've never been good at or had an interest in or anything. I just, I'm free to erase and whatever. I do it on there. I take that and the keyboard out into the garage. I like to stand and type and work on like essays or something. I stand out in my garage with the garage doors open in the middle of the night, like, you know, working on essays and shit like that. And it can go anywhere with me. And also it directly plugs into my photography workflow. I can, I can take my camera and wirelessly transmit raw images over to my iPad and open them on with Affinity Photo, which is also what I use on my, my PC, um, and fucking do in-field photo editing and that sort of stuff. And I have like a, lot, a whole bunch of the photos you can see on my website. I use the iPad for the workflow. Um, so I, I like it. Um, I understand like the issues with Apple. Trust me, I'm not fucking chilling here. I get it. But at the end of the day, right, I, I don't like the surface as a, I don't like the surface as a platform or as a device and fucking Android tablets just aren't slick. So like, as far as a tablet goes, I've got an Apple. And once I had the tablet, I was like, you know what? I'll just get a fucking iPhone so I can have the, the shared data between them. And I'm happy with it, right? There's a lot of fucking choice. Like, look, what are you going to do, right? Like, you could try and get a fair phone, which you can't fucking get in this country for shit. Or you end up with Google or Apple or Samsung, which, again, is just another South Korean mega corporation that owns and enslaves. So take your fucking pick, really. At the end of the day, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. So make your decisions and go forth. Um. And some of us don't have a choice in what ones we want because our work tells us, hey, look, we're in the uh, Apple ecosphere. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, Night Loaded. I have a Xiaomi and it's fantastic. Hashtag Chinese censorship. Um, I have a Zoom. Let's see. <laughs> Jesus. Nobody knows what a Zoom is in here. <laughs> I mean, not anymore. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Jesus. Um. I had a tablet that I once, I really liked it, but it wasn't branded. It's cool. You discovered a new way to help your goals. Um, and, uh, somebody came in, Hey, your resolution. Um, and, uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Cassie, I love that I can transmit raw to my phone and laptop too. It's great. Yeah. Um, let's see. And scrolling. I'll take Apple because it's just solid and lasts virtually forever compared to Android open. I agreed. Like, like I said, I'm still rocking a fucking iPhone seven plus still works, still doing its thing. Um, so, you know, yeah. I run with my zoom. I, I still run with my zoom. It still works. Um, Cupcake had an iPod. Uh, Ocelot. Wow. Your work makes you choose a particular brand. Dude. Ocelot. That's just straight up common practice most most major entities that are going to integrate i'm i'm guessing it's integrated into like what their exchange or like yep yeah yeah and uh yeah the exchange server and the 365 number one number two it also has a remote kill yeah so Um, yeah that's that's pretty much par for the course i figured it'd be exchange i've done my fair share of exchange setups in the day 
Um, but as far as our tech team goes, they want the remote kill more than they want anything else. Because like, if I leave my phone in a taxi or something in New yeah, York City, burn it. It literally has access to every single customer data that we have. Yeah, it just needs to be burned instantaneously. Like, yeah, yeah just fucking burn that shit. Like Mission Impossible, this will self destruct. And mm-hmm. mine, I have that set on mine for like too many bad entries. So like the cops try and get into my fucking phone too many times, right? Like it, it will auto destruct. <laughs> like, you know, I've got that set on mine as well. Um, just for different reasons. Um, and public had a zoom, uh, caboose knew a zoom, uh, caboose said, I thought they were a little better than iPods for the same generation device. They actually were. It's just fucking Microsoft dropped the ball in a bunch of ways. Um, Microsoft, the only thing, and they almost fucked up the Xbox too. The only thing that held Xbox together was Halo. Um, dude, I loved, um, I absolutely loved my first generation Xbox because I modded the ever fucking shit out of it. It was amazing. Um, I had, here's, 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 here we go. Here we go. All right. You guys want to know how fucking, all right, we'll, we'll see who knows what. I had one of these in high school. Um, let's see. Yes, car executor chip for the win. Yes, um, this was a Rio, uh, a, a diamond Rio digital. Um, it was one of the very first MP3 players, right? I think it may have been the second MP3 player. Um, yeah, while everybody else was rocking like CD players, still, fucking Kai was like straight up. I'm like, wait. You know, I was already running an FTP server for my school. Well, for my school, for those in my school who knew what was up, I was running an FTP server, right? What you need, I got you covered, right? So I had huge collections of music. And so, yeah, I was like, oh, there's these devices now. You can just put the MP3s on the device, like rather than burn the CD. Yep. So that's what I was rocking in high school. Um, were you the kid with flying cars in GTA four? GTA four is way after my time in high school. Um, let's see. GTA four release date. I, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, <laughs> no. Uh, my face when Kai was one of those bougie high school kids I would have robbed as a kid. Cat, I had people like you around me who would have fucking shanked you if you tried to rob me. So it's sort of a, a, a self-cancellation. It's like, you know, subtracting a negative number. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Right, Lance? Oh, the FTP era. Um you remember the launch of GTA four, dude, I remember playing GTA, right? Like I, I, I remember playing GTA like straight up. Um, let's see, what would that have been? Yep. Um, I was a senior in high school. I was ready to graduate when GTA got released. So there you go. I remember fucking like, yeah, I'm pre GTA, right? For those of you that are like your reference points are GTA. Like my reference points are like Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, like the doom 
Quake, Unreal Tournament, Half-Life, right? Like, I played the original Half-Life when it came out. Yeah, I mean, there hasn't... I actually have the disc still for the very first real-time strategy game ever made. Can you name it? No, because RTS wasn't my thing. Dune 2. Interesting. Um, yeah, I played Civ, Civ 2. Yep, a car, a car got there. Car accident got there, Dune. Um, the yeah, w- Wolfenstein 3D. Um, Lynx, you know, was the uh, golf simulator of choice back then. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. The legendary PC era. I got it. Yes. Like basically like the era that defined video gaming as we know it today is Falcon 3.0 was the ultimate flight, sim- uh, combat flight simulator way back then. And Falcon 4.0 was really good too. I hated flight sims. I still kind of do, but they're impressive. Like the guys that do like the fucking hobbyist shit with it like in the basement and go full out with it that spend like a hundred K on their setup and shit. I Mm love dude. Like, how do you not respect that? That's impressive Mm -hmm. as hell, but like, it's not for me. Uh, Tech tech support said, Kai, I think I'm sea lining the wannabe end cap in your YouTube comments. Uh, Again, tech support. I would never encourage you to do that. Good job. Um, (laughs) Shoot, shoot, bang, bang was more my go-to. Exactly public. Yeah, like fucking Wolfenstein, fucking Doom, Quake, Half-Life. Uh, Unreal Tournament was my jam, dude. I played Unreal Tournament. Like, Unreal oh, Battlefield. When did that come out? A while ago. Um, <laughs> Glazy, you're adorable. It's amazing how many how many absolutely objectively wrong takes you have, Glazy. I actually have come to respect it. Glacey said Xbox 360 era shits on any PC era. <laughs> I love you. Glacey. Wow. That came out that the first one was 1942 came out in 2002. That came out later than I thought it did. No, whether I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll give you your, your points back with her. Um, like I, I've taught my head, like I can tell you like outright, just no. Um, but I'll get you your points back with her. Actually, you can get your points back with her. I, I'm pretty sure you could do that. Um, let's see. The greatest Battlefield game ever came out in 2008. Bad company. It was respectable. Yeah, public by sure by 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 long shot. Yeah, it was respectable. But dude, the original Xbox for modability, like hardware and software modability, nobody's ever come close, dude. We broke that fucking console. My that, favorite joke about the uh, Xbox was uh, people hate the Xbox so so bad that they uh, turn a full three sixty and walk away. Nice. Um, let's see. That got geometry nerds up in a tizzy. <sighs> Um, I don't know. Uh, I just want to. Of course, of course. Then there's this yeah. game. Do you know where Man Crick's wife is? And all of you who know what I'm talking about, God rest the 13 years that you spent playing that game. <laughs> um. All right. We're gonna. I'm gonna click the button. I'm gonna do the thing. Um, y'all, it's been a good fucking stream. Um, so, like, yeah. Bad movie night, y'all. Do you want to, like, some of y'all are already fucked up, like Buddhist. Buddhist started, started pre-gaming this shit like a bitch. Um, fucking Ocelot, nice to meet you as well. Have a great day. Um, for those of you going to join us for bad movie night on the Discord server. Um, thank you, Peaky. I thought it was good as well. Um, yeah, yeah, um, you're welcome to resolution living your best life. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a good stream. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for fucking, you know, doing the thing and the thing and the thing. Um, uh, public, we're already raiding over to me, Trey. Um, I'm just gonna, I just, I just went with my first gut instinct and I love meat. So I'm just going to raid over to me, Trey public. Thank you though. Uh, if you've got a recommendation, send it to me anyway, so I can rate in the future. Um, 
I'm just heading out of work. I'll get to watch BMN. Nice, Cricks. Um, yeah, we'll we'll figure out what the what the hell we're gonna watch over on voice chat here in a second. Um, so everyone, Monday. Monday we'll have another edition of DGen Storytime, and then we'll do some more in caps aren't anarchist reading. Catch y'all later.